Council, I'd like to call to order the Bothell Planning Commission meeting for tonight, Wednesday, December 7th, 2016 at 6 p.m. Uh, there's uh, no non-agenda public comments. And, oh, sorry, all commissioners are here and accounted for tonight, with the exception of Commissioner Stedman, who is absent and excused. And there's no minutes to approve. Um, is there any? Uh, is there any new business tonight? Okay, no new business, and no public hearing this evening. Um, so with that, we will just uh, jump into the uh, study session for this evening, the 2016-2017 Housing Strategy Plan Update. We're joined tonight by uh, Arthur Sullivan from Arch, and uh, Dave Boyd with uh, Community Development. And with that, I will go ahead and hand it over to uh, Dave to uh, lead us through the presentation. Actually, I'm going to pass it, pass it on to Arthur to lead us through the presentation that uh, that he has prepared. Um, and um, but I just uh, just as a preference, uh, a preface, pref, preface uh, to the meeting. Um, this uh, item was. Uh, uh, we're also joined with uh, by Mike Stanger, and we do have a spot at the table. We made it cozy tonight. Um, uh, this was a, uh, an item that was initiated by council in the 2016 planning docket, uh, and it was actually intended to, to span over into uh, 2017. Uh, the, the, uh, and we're going to be discussing uh, housing strategies for Bothell and uh, specifically uh, looking at updating the housing strategy plan, which was last updated in 2011. It was essentially uh, and I think that was a, a relatively minor update from the 2006-2007 uh, um, uh, housing strategy plan. So uh, the the context is that in 2015 we updated, uh, did a major update of the uh, 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 Imagine Bothell Comprehensive Plan, including the housing and, and human services element. And so this is to uh, the next step in uh, bringing the strategy plan into uh, into conformance with with the changes that were made uh, there. So, uh, and also one other thing, uh, the the notion of uh, City of Bothell's housing policies and strategies and and program uh, did come up at a at uh, the no November first uh, City Council meeting, uh, and there was talk of the need for a, a housing policy for Bothell. But I think. What was really intended was the need for a housing program, and that's what we're starting to uh, develop here tonight. So we do have a number of policies that uh, Arthur will be going over uh, in our comp plan. Uh, we have a, a housing strategy plan that we're going to be updating, and um, and that'll be the, uh, the second step towards uh, developing a true housing program. So hopefully that's what we'll uh, come out of this with uh, in about six months' time. So, with that, I'll turn it over to to Arthur. Good evening. Good to be back. And um, so tonight is really meant to sort of help us as a group kind of start thinking about this strategy and what is it about? Because it's a little bit different than most of your work. You know, okay, I got a rezone here specific, or I have a specific issue that we have to develop some regulations around um, and it's a little different than comprehensive planning because we're really trying to sort of get into a more explicit action kind of what kind of actions might the city start thinking about so it's meant to be kind of a bridge between uh, from a big picture point of view from your housing element and comprehensive plan and to your um, actions that you do that result in policy and not policies per se now but rather regulations or programs that the city is implementing to try to uh, implement the policies that are in the comprehensive plan and it's and and we're working with a number of cities this is something and I'm uh, I'm, I'm trying to get ahead of myself but so tonight what we want to do is go through about a few different themes and things and then also open it up to you to start talking through so and, and raising issues and starting to get your feel for you know just before we start stuffing you with a lot of data um, which some of you have already maybe read when we did the housing and housing needs update uh, several years ago 
but you know this is a chance to sort of get a feel for things and set us up for a process um, that we've talked with staff about and it's a process that it's going to be molded to what works for you I mean the end is at the end is your task is to develop something for the council that's going to help them um, move forward with more specific types of actions that will affect housing in the community um, and and so let's see so advancing the slides you're going to do that for me or do we uh, can you can come out it might be I can certainly um, or if yeah. the mouse works from over here I guess not that's no, doesn't work that way so so the first part we have three sections different topics we want to talk with you about tonight and if you look at the agenda you'll see one is sort of a housing con planning context background second is just some thoughts that I've had in working with cities all these years and then the third is some conversation and discussion questions that were in your packet that we thought would be good to sort of help do some framework to get you thinking about it and help us as we get ready to move into further steps so next slide so the first thing is where does this housing strategy fit into all the various planning steps that cities get involved in and so you can see um, the foundational first box at the top is there's a state growth management act there is countywide planning policies um, there are regional plans and those were all um, sort of foundational type documents that all cities use in King County and um, around the state um, that influence your developing the next step which is your comprehensive plan and the comprehensive plan in terms of housing has several sections that directly or indirectly touch upon things that affect housing most obviously is the housing element but you also have a land use element so that's where you set your basic land uses which have a, a key issue related to what kind of housing you create um, you have economic development and there's probably depending on the city and, and you combine human services into your housing element some cities do human services separately so you have a couple of different areas uh, but basically your comprehensive plan is where the city on a very broad level creates visions for its city so then some cities and you do you have chapters of your comprehensive plan that are sub area plans and that's where you look at a specific neighborhood but it's still policy level driven and things along those lines so those are things that you've worked on in the past um, and so now where the housing strategy comes in is one of the things I found with cities is that when they're working on housing elements there's so much right there's so many different angles you can think about housing it's hard to sort of go what are the focus areas or what's how does it all tie together and it gets really hard to do and so the purpose of this uh, is that the strategy plan is I'm not quite there yet is Sorry. to help you start thinking about transitioning from policies to what kind of programs or regulations or land use actions would actually start implementing your policies so before you start getting into individual policies this is an attempt to sort of thinking broad scale but instead of thinking at it as a policy it's thinking about it in terms of specific action cities could take and it's more than just regulatory it can be things like funding it can be land it can be a variety of different things it can be um, some cities say that if you own real estate or rental properties you can't discriminate against, against people who have section 8 uh, which is a federal assistance so it's a wide range of types of activities and what we use the strategy the housing strategy for is to help you sort of look at a lot of these and say given what's going on in our city which one should we it's like a work program which one should we look at more seriously first and and the idea is to look at a wide range of activities and the thing to keep in mind with you is this isn't just about affordable housing this is about affordable housing will be a lot of the conversation but it's also and the council wants a lot of emphasis on affordable housing but it's about other housing issues too that show up in your housing element policies and plans so so it is meant to be broader and so once we have the strategy together and it will go to council it'll be adopted by the council um, it essentially starts to set, set a roadmap of specific types of local programs that you would research now what we're doing at this stage of the housing strategy is we're not trying to say um, we let's say okay we're going to do direct assistance and we should do fund we should do a portion of our sales tax should go and the amount of four million dollars should go to affordable housing 
That's not what we're trying to do with the housing strategy. What the housing strategy is saying is, okay, we got 10 things here. We ought to look, it's really important for this city to look at, are we going to fund affordable housing and how? But we don't know, we might in the end say we're not going to. But we should really look at it. It's an important topic and we should look at that first or we should look at three or four or five things first and then here are things after we do those we should work on next. And we're not trying to dictate an answer at this point. It's from knowing a certain amount about these certain things and a certain amount about your community. For example, you're a community where manufactured housing is a pretty important topic. So you might say, hey, preserving manufactured housing, if we think that's a strategy, we better do it sooner than later because if we don't, we might lose some in the meantime, okay? Um, whereas Bellevue would be like, that's on the way back burner because maybe we don't have any, so they may not, or maybe Issaquah that has one, they're gonna put it on the back burner because it's not really an issue. So it's a matter of, com and, and so that sorting process, I can't tell you right now what's gonna be the sorting process to have things rise to the top. That's where you, we're gonna try, it might be data driven, it might be circumstance driven, it might be there's some other planning initiative that because you're doing that, this is a logical thing that there might be, an, there might be a house, affordable housing component that if you don't do it now when you're doing this other thing, you're gonna lose an opportunity. Um, or it could be just from your experience in your community, you hear things going on in your community, it's like, hey, we, we should be trying to work on this. So we're gonna try to give you a variety of different tools to, do, to, to get to that point. So the next step would be, after you do the housing strategies, you're picking certain types of land use regulations or direct assistance or funding support or fee waivers, and you will then go back and actually do the really hard work of researching those in great detail and coming up with either, either through the commission, because these are the kind of things you work on, or things like funding that the council will take the lead on, you'll actually decide where, you know, actually research them, decide if you should do them, and if so, the specific regulations that would implement them. And then after that step, you have local program administration. You have a program, you got to administer it. So those, in, my, in our minds, are sort of the steps of where cities get involved that affect housing, and then the strategy is right there in the middle is really a transition from big picture policy to starting to drive actions that actually have impact and results. So does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Yeah, thanks out there for being here and for giving us the breakdown. I just want to run through an example and make sure I'm tracking with you correctly. Great. So let's talk about affordable housing. We, we've been throwing it around for several months. Part of the housing strategy, we would identify that that's a priority or something we want to right. look at, if it is. Mm -hmm. Then we would take it down further and talk about you know, whether you're looking at a rezone or an upzone, making that a mandatory requirement, that would fit in the next box? That would fit in, well, where it would fit is in the housing strategy, there's a lot of things you could do for affordable housing. You'll see the list that we start with, and if you look, if you look at the housing strategy that you adopted a few years, you know, 2011, it goes on for like six or seven pages. And so there's a number that would affect affordability. And so let's say there's 15 of those you're gonna decide which three or four you would rank highest and which <coughs> ones maybe middle and you'll decide how you wanna kinda of rank them or tier them or whatever. And the idea would be those that you raise to the top, you would look at first. And so the example you just gave, when we do rezones, should we have a policy when we do rezones to look at rezones and, uh, and potentially include affordability? Um, my guess is from the council direction, that's probably one the council wants to sort of raise to the, you know, what is gonna be our sort of standard for dealing with that circumstance. So dealing with the specific ones does go to the next box. The first box is you're raising that topic above others, okay. like, such as a land donation, okay? And you might say, wow, they sound both important, but we don't own any land, so what can we donate? So that's not a high priority. Okay, so then let's say we identify the ones that we want to rise up and mm -hmm. we do the research to know exactly how they're gonna be structured. Yes. Then we have to go back and update all the other plans accordingly, wouldn't we? Or we'd have to go back oh. to the comprehensive plan and include some so of the, this. The odds here. are we think your comprehensive plan is already set to stage, that the strategies will be consistent with your policies. Okay. So that they will definitely be the framework for, that will be one of the main things we're looking at, is the intent of the strategy and the things you are implementing is consistency with your housing element. Okay. And Thanks. maybe something will come up in the conversation that might trigger 
say, oops, maybe we should revisit something. But for the most part, you should already have the basis in your housing element there today. I can just add to that uh, with regard to uh, affordable requirements uh, linked to rezones. We, the comprehensive plan and the uh, current ha housing strategy plan already have elements that, that uh, direct us to that. That's why we included those in the in the uh, Nike Hill and South Riverside uh, and discussed them with the Williamson uh, rezones. So, um, so some of these we'll be revisiting and, and reprioritizing and maybe tweaking, uh, but uh, uh, a lot of that is in place already. In fact, one of our first steps will be to take this generic list of strategies and show which ones are consistent with existing policies. Oh. So that's one of the first things we'll do, is to actually, you know, there's sort of a list that we've accumulated from looking at many cities and many national groups and regional groups saying, here are the range of housing strategies cities can consider. And so the very first exercise we'll do is list those and we'll say, which policies in your comp plan are they consistent with? So would they help implement some policies you already have? And that's the first screen. So Arthur, th this is going to be a much broader discussion than that we had yes. earlier Correct. this year and, yes. and that we're kind of zooming out and yes. we did focus on affordable housing, but now we're going to look at uh, maybe additional strategies for that. Yes, okay. correct. Gotcha. This will be much broader. Um, yeah, exactly. And Arthur, thanks again for being here. Um, so with regard to Commissioner Cave's question, um, with regards to not having to go back to the comprehensive plan. You may have just touched on this, but is that because it says here that it's not a formal document, the HSP? It says it's just kind of... It's, it's not... It's a guiding document? Right. There is a... Right. It's a guiding document. The council will adopt it. It's referenced in your comprehensive plan that you will do one, but it does not become part of your comprehensive plan. So that's why we sort of... It's not... That's why is it a housing strategy? Some cities don't even call it a housing strategy plan. They call it a housing strategy. Um, but the point is between the commissions and councils, it's something that's officially evaluated. The original idea came up from this many, many years ago when in a big government entity, the staff were like, how do we know what things we have the liberty to work on? And it's a way to get the community electeds and policymakers to look at a big picture and say, here, of the big picture, here are the six things that we really like, go for it and bring back each one for us to work on. And so it's really, I think the words we used here is it's as much a prioritized work program. And it is meant to be broad housing, not just one form of housing. So that's why I'm saying it's, you'll probably have a few conversations or moments when we're doing this where it's like, okay, I'm trying to sort this all out in my head and what really works. And we're going to do everything we can. We're going to show you some ideas we have here to help you kind of get through that, um, that kind of stuff. Because I have found with other groups, it is kind of a, it's, it's a daunting task to undertake. Um, because it's like, well, why do we know which strategies are going to work really well or not? You don't necessarily know that at this point. We're going to try to give you some ideas and give you some data to help you think it through. And a lot of it is also responding to what you think is going on in your community. Okay? So next slide. So to go back, um, a little bit back up the chart and give you a little more context on each some of those steps. The Growth Management Act um, basically has limited language in there about what cities are supposed to do related to housing and housing elements, et cetera. Um, one is to address housing affordable to all economic segments, which you've done in your, you know, your comp plan has all this, but we're just trying to roll it back because there may be some moments when we're discussing this that we'll say, well, part of the reason we're doing this is it also helps you be consistent with GMA or be consistent with the countywide planning policies. So, so one is address all economic segments. Another is to do a variety of densities and housing types. Uh, another is to encourage preservation of existing housing. And then another is to do a housing element that does a housing needs analysis, which did we send, you sent them, was that in the packet? No, we're going to send you that. That's going to be your first homework. No, it's, it was in the packet. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to not focus on that tonight, but that's the thing we're going to focus on in the next meeting is talking about the housing needs and the data that's there. Um, Sufficient land for housing, which you have done in your comprehensive plan already, but so that sort of was done at the comprehensive plan level. Um, and then adequate provisions for existed and projected needs. So this is where you have to take your housing needs and start saying, 
we've got policies that we think address it, but now it's going to be now what are you going to do action-wise that start addressing some of those needs? And so these are the framework elements of GMA that we will be carrying through from writing the housing element to developing a strategy plan. Okay, so that's framework from GMA, the state level. Any, yes? Arthur, the, the third bullet point there, encourage preservation of existing housing stock. Can you talk a little bit more about that? I'm, I, I don't really totally understand what the, kind of what the details of sure. that are. Um, well, it can be, a, it can be a couple different ways. Um, one is that I mentioned manufactured housing. That's housing in your community. It isn't necessarily subsidized, but it's relatively affordable. And so do you want, you know, so one of it can be preserving affordability. Another can be physical preservation, so it stays in good condition, so market rate housing. Others can be you have federally or other subsidized housing that you don't want those subsidies to go away. You want to keep it with the assistance and the, the affordability levels that come with the assistance. And then you sometimes, what we've done, and I'm rolling my eyes because I'm trying to think if we've done it in Bothell ever, and I don't think I have an example from Bothell where someone has, yes, there is an example. Um, what's the place the Housing Authority bought? Oh, um, Park Royale. Right, Park Royale. So there was a place that was falling apart, market owned, and was affordable. The Housing Authority came in and they bought it and they fixed it up, and while it's not, I don't think they have covenants on it saying it will be affordable, because they own it, it will be relatively affordable. It's sort of pre being transitioned from something that was historically naturally affordable just through market forces, that in a market where housing prices are increasing, you secure it and you guarantee it will be at a certain affordability level. So it's not referring to specific exact existing housing stock. It has nothing to do with like a historical preservation or anything like that. It's just about different types of... Exactly. It, it, so and, basically and kind of a, a preservation of a mix of housing and, stock. And, and for some cities, it could be historic too. Okay. I mean, I mean that's, that's part of an overall strategy. And I think you guys even have some reference to that, a policy you're there too. And so if you felt like you had a historic neighborhood that was being transitioned, then maybe an important strategy for a housing strategy is, what do we need to do to try to preserve? So if you go, have anybody been to, been to Kitslano and out on the out, outer lying area of Vancouver? That has an area with old homes that were starting to fall apart and the market, it was becoming obsolete housing. And the city was like, hmm, we don't want to lose this really nice housing stock and they made rules that said, if you preserve the architectural integrity of the building, you can put, you can put up to three or four units and we'll let you subdivide the unit, the home. But when you go through that neighborhood, and it was, it was right a block from a commercial bus line, and there weren't big families anymore, and it's been a, and they're owner-occupied. They have to be subdivided in ways they can be owner-occupied. And they've turned all these big, beautiful homes into beautiful four-plexes. They have the same visual character, so that's an example of doing a couple things at once. So it is. It, it does have an aesthetic or cultural it could. aspect to it. It could. It doesn't okay. have to, but it could. I mean, that's again where you layer on the context of your city. Okay, so that's where there's a lot of room. You know, when we get to the next slide, we go to the countywide planning policies. Um, at least for King County, you got two, and I we only had the slide for King County, but. You do also have Snohomish County, and, and we should I probably, there's a little literary miss, but um, here is in the King County Countywide policy, planning policies, the first thing they say is cities do have a role, okay? That, again, they sort of reinforce GMA, look at the housing needs of all economic and demographic groups. So you're looking at trying to address a wide range. But they also say that cities do have a role, that this isn't, you know, head in the sand doesn't work. You do impact housing, so you need to think about it and deal with it. Um, the third is affordability, and they do define affordability as very low, as, and I have a slide in a little bit, but they have three different affordability levels um, that they call out, um, and, and then also special needs. And then um, the other thing that they do is they also, and I didn't put it in the bullet here, and I probably should, is they say jurisdiction should tailor their activities around their conditions. And so the example they give is that 
the one that we that was written up in the countywide planning policies is saying around affordability that certain communities especially in South King County there's a lot of housing that is affordable to very low and low income and so therefore their policies may focus on preservation and not necessarily expansion other cities especially like in parts of East King County the amount of affordability is significantly less than what the needs are countywide you can do preservation but you probably need to think about expansion too okay so that's one example others can be you have manufactured housing so that's a local condition so the countywide planning policies this time tried to be very respectful of allowing cities to try to tailor their efforts to their local conditions okay? and then finally the other thing they did and we'll jump to the next slide because the last bullet really is a follow-up hey, on, on that sorry to interrupt on that yeah. slide there uh, the fourth bullet their special needs could you elaborate on that a little bit is that so that's have to do with accessibility or is that right is that so other? special needs it's just often a hard one to define but the way we typically define it is it's housing in which people need in which there's some type of service associated with that housing to assist people to be able to live in that housing. So it could be that um, they're, you know, senior housing that provides meals and things like that. It can be a group home for developmentally disabled where there is staff that comes into the house so that the person can afford, can, uh, can maintain and make sure that they can live there. So the special needs can cover different populations, homeless housing, special needs housing, there's a lot of overlap there because certain homeless housing have services and programs for the residents who live there. Um, so that's what special needs housing is, is Thank where you. there's something in addition to just the physical housing. Okay, yes, yes. So I, I'm not sure that I totally digested everything correctly sure. as I went through this, but I had the impression that King County has, in the affordable housing component, has a plethora comparatively for single occupancy affordable housing is that a, the right impression that there is fail I'm not quite well like there's more apartments for one and two people than there is affordable housing just for dedicated to families so that if you're a single person oh. or a young married you're going to have a, a higher likelihood of finding affordable housing than say a family would so I don't know if that impression is correct I'm glad, I'm glad you said it the way you did. And that's, tonight, we want to talk about impressions. Okay, so. And, and then what we'll do is we'll get data to see if those impressions are correct. Okay, so, so those categories of whoever the very low income and the, mm -hmm. you know, extreme uh, uh, low income, moderate, does that also include the demographics of yes. who that's attached yes. to? Okay. And so, for example, let's take your example. When we look at the data, and if that plays itself out, you might say, hey, when we do affordable housing, we'd like to make sure we're getting found two bedrooms too, and not just small units. Okay. And, and, that, and so therefore, so for example, when Bellevue did a program, a tax exemption program a year, two years ago, um, council member was concerned about that, and so they added a policy that says, if you wanna use this program, your development has to have at least 15% two bedrooms. Okay. Okay. So that's something they did. But I'm not sure um, how accurate that statement is. But so part of what our job is, if you have an impression you think something's like that, then part of what our job is to try to do is let's see if we can't find out how true that is or not. And then if it isn't true, then you don't worry about it. And if it is true, then you might, as you're doing strategies, start somehow being conscious of that as you're thinking about it. Okay, I get, I, maybe what that flag was, I was I seeing a, a high number of affordable apartments and less affordable homes for ownership. And maybe that's where I well, got now, that. Now that's from. different, now that's another. Uh, maybe that's, that's where I made and, that. And, that's a, and those are the kind of distinguishments okay. we want to get at. So is it ownership versus rental? That's the, really okay. the issue. Okay, I'll let you get back to your. Okay. So no, this is and this is perfect what you're doing tonight because we're writing all all the stuff you're saying now on these questions, we're trying to take note of now because they'll come back again later and they'll help influence as we move along. So this is all these are all good questions as we're going along tonight. Okay, this is totally an evening. We know things we want to talk with you about, but this is about you asking questions and hopefully at the end feeling more comfortable about what we're trying to achieve. 
Okay. And what? Because at the end, we're going to ask you, what do you think? The last question of the night is, what kind of information do you think you're going to need to be able to move forward on this? Okay. Um, so, one of the things the countywide planning policies really did emphasize as a as a shift um, in this in this last change to the countywide planning policies is a process that they started saying it's as important for cities to consciously go through an exercise of develop policies, um, look at your needs assessment, develop your policies, and then start implementing strategies, and then watch the results, and then go through it again. So a constant sort of four-step review, act, re review, act, you know, um, update policies, take actions, review the results of that, and keep watching changes in your community and see how you're evolving. And generally, the time frame, in fact, I think there's actually language in the appendix that gives guidance, says that cycle is like about a four to five year cycle. To sort of think about. So that's where when he said the last time you did this was about 2011, this is actually about the right time frame for revisiting some of this stuff. Um, and so the strategy plan is a key process of starting to jump you from, it's sort of like 2.5. The strategy plan is the thing that helps bridge you and get you. So a lot of cities write the comp plans and then it just sort of sits there. And this is sort of the action that gets you from beyond the policies and start taking, explicitly thinking about action, okay? Um, and so this is now called out. And so another reason for doing this, this is sort of now a GMA thing is now that this is in the countywide planning policies, doing this strategy plans helps document that the city is following the countywide planning process. So that's partially the reason for doing this is now to be in compliance with the countywide planning policies, which means to be in compliance with GMA. Okay? And in fact, the emphasis is more as much on your process and taking reasonable actions now as it is about I created five thousand housing units. Okay? And in fact you're the city why this exists. Your lawsuit from 2000 and with FutureWise? Oh, yeah, 2005 or six. Right, You're, that lawsuit is what triggered us as staff, because I worked, helped you with that, and watched what the courts did and realized what the courts looked at more because it says, right, in GMA, we realize economic condition, how, cities don't build housing, right? They rely on others too. That you don't get to control directly what happens, and so you can't totally influence completely. You affect it, but you don't. You're not. You're not a part. It's not like parks. It's not right. You don't. You build the parks. You build the roads, or government does. You don't build most of the housing. You build the government builds some, or helps finance some of it. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. So, the courts and GMA recognize that. So where is this line of doing enough or not doing enough? And what we sort of learned from that is, A, what process are you going through? Are you at least paying attention? Are you trying to do stuff? And so the coaching we've given cities when we look at all these strategies is, well, if every other city in similar market conditions is using a particular land use regulation or strategy and you're not, you better have a reason you're not. And you can't, but you better document it. Because if, if that's a tool that cities like you are using and you're not, that's the kind of things that the courts are probably more likely to look at. Are you doing what's reasonable for you as a jurisdiction to do? Okay? And so that's sort of a lens as we're doing this that can be thought about too. So you'll see one of the slides I show you tonight. We'll show you what other cities are doing. Can you expand on that? Sure. Future-wise issue, just as an example, can mm -hmm. you give us a little more detail? What were the central issues around that whole uh, issue. I can, but if you want to take a shot at that, I... You probably know better. That okay. was shortly after I came on board here. Okay. Uh, what I recall is that one of the big issues was our, our 40,000 zoning and, and uh, whether that met the policy that, uh, that we should uh, have a uh, uh, maximum or minimum, no, maximum, <laughs> minimum density of at least four, four right. uh, uh, homes per right. acre. So what, what came up in that the thing that the reason why your city couldn't just say we're okay, the one thing that really stood out is that you had never made the connection between your population projections, because in Snohomish County they do population projections, 
or household projections, and in King County they do housing unit projections. They did the math to get you to housing units. And the city never documented in their comp plan how many, the capacity under the zoning that could be built. And so they were never able to show, well, let's see if we have this many households that translate to this many housing units, and we have, and do we have enough zoning in place? And so the first thing we did, the main thing we did was document that you had the zoning capacity to meet your growth targets. The second thing you had to do is then show that you had a variety of types of zoning so that you could have a variety of different types of housing, which would theoretically set up a variety of affordability levels. So that was the cornerstone of it. And then the rest was documenting the things you had done. In fact, that's one of the slides you'll see here. And showing that you had done, and then your main defense was, look, we've done this, we've done this, we've done this, we have these policies in place. And it was interesting, one of the main arguments at the very end, after working for a year with FutureWise, and on most things, staff and FutureWise said okay with each other, but there was one policy in particular that the city said, and it's the policy that he just referred to at the very beginning of the meeting, in which, he, in the, which the city policy says when we are doing rezones that affect development capacity, we will assess whether or not there should be a linkage to affordability. FutureWise wanted to say, we will require affordability. And the courts cited on the city side on that. And they tried to say because they won't get to their housing unit count unless they do that. And the courts didn't weigh in. They didn't hold that as the absolute test. But they saw that, um, so that was sort of, that sort of what helped us understand it's about the process and consideration and taking reasonable action. So the, the policy doesn't say you wouldn't do it, but it didn't lock you into saying you absolutely would do it every time. And so, um, and that's why the policy, the strategy plan becomes important, why the policy, policy, this change was made by the county is to sort of now say, if you don't do a strategy plan, if you don't start acting on stuff, if you got a policy saying you're gonna do that and you never consider it, now, you might get in trouble because you didn't even look into it. You got a policy saying you're going to do it, and you didn't do it. Why not? But our, our comprehensive plan has <clears throat> different sections that have policies, goals, and actions, yes. right? So what we're talking about then is, so there clearly are actions in the comprehensive right. plan, but are we talking about then this housing strategy plan making, creating more specific actions out of those actions? Yes. So the actions that are in the in the that should guide us, they're, they're not in the comprehensive plan. They're not specific enough to, right, to take action, so to speak. Right, and there's nothing that's compelling you to take action on those. So the strategy plan starts to drive. So you may look at your implement your right those things, sure. and that may be half your work already done. Most cities don't have you have a little more of that than some cities do. That last level. So is our role then to not so much question the policies or the goals, but to look at the at the actions of the comprehensive plan and kind of put some structure, some meat around those yes. in terms of specific. I think, that's one, I think that's a good way of putting it. Okay. And I so, could add to that uh, to decide which microphone. Could add to that to decide which you do first. What which, are the, we do, which we do first. What okay. priorities. Because it seems to me that a lot right. of the strategies, I'm not sure I really would consider them strategies because it seems to me, or excuse me, actions, because actions seem seem like they ought to be more specific. They should say, you will do this mm -hmm. within this time frame, and this will right. be the desired outcome of right. that. And, and, and that's where I think it's a little tricky because I'm going to use accessory dwelling units. It's like, say, well, that seems, because I think we talked about that one with you guys the last go around, and, and it was, and, and so for accessory dwelling, it goes, wow. We only have a quarter per, you know, in other words, numbers per household is a fifth of some of the other cities. So, boy, why wouldn't we try to get more done? And so at this point, you'd say, because you say, wow, there's maybe some potential there. So there's enough for you to go, hmm, this is, seems potentially applicable to us. Now, are we going to sit down in this next five months and for ADUs go, and the solution is we're going to change this specific rule and this specific, we're going to change the code for ADUs? Not necessarily. You might hint at some of the reasons, things that you think we should look at, but it's mostly to say, boy, 
we've got to do every, we need to look at ADUs really hard and see if we can get a way to get the frequency up. And that may be all you have to say now. And you may say, now the things we think based on our conversations, we think we need to do more community outreach. Maybe people aren't aware that they're allowed and maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's because we just learned in Redmond they make people have separate utility meter hookups. Well, that's a killer, okay, um, kind of thing. So we may have a sense of some of the things, but we may not have a full sense of it. But we think the tool, that kind of housing is important for the city, so we should be looking at trying to find ways to get more of that housing done, okay? Um, the other example I can think of for you, for this city, going back to your comment about for families, is you have a zone that allows sort of smaller homes, and what was the zoning that you created, your R8 or 12 maybe? Um, no, um, our, our uh, smallest lot strictly single family zone is R5400, right. although you could do even right. smaller right. lot for single family in R4000 or right. R, even R2800. Right. And, and the story there may be, and I might not have my facts all quite right, but I kind of recall, I think, the last iteration that it was a zone you didn't have before the 90, you know, before the mid 90s, and you created it, and it allowed smaller homes on, so you got more homes, right? But it was still mostly ownership, and everywhere you zone that has now been developed, so now you can't do more of that. And they went, "Wow, should we look for more opportunities for that zone? Because this is we've seen it; it's been built." And maybe, maybe you don't like it, so you're like, "Oh, we got enough of it." You go, "Wow, this is really working. It's a good fit in our community." but we've run out of it. So maybe that should be something we, you would want to say, you're not going to decide at this stage which sites in the city might do that, but you'd say, hey, that should be something we should prioritize looking at to see if there's other areas where that zoning might be applicable. But shouldn't the, so I'm looking at the, of all the attachments, attachment one and attachment two, just mm -hmm. trying to compare them. What I see is, Attachment one, the page one, talks about neighborhood vitality. Yes. And then we go to the uh, action plan or the housing strategy plan, attachment two, and it does have neighborhood vitality uh, right. listed there. But it doesn't. What I'm seeing is it doesn't. It, it doesn't refer to the actions that are outlined in the comprehensive plan. It refers mm -hmm. to the goals that are outlined in the comprehensive plan. So, right. It almost seems like a regurgitation of what's already been done in the conference of plan, the goals and the policies have already been established, yes. the actions have been established. Shouldn't there be a listing, for example, under neighborhood vitality actions, HH, HHSA1, ensure compliance with residential subdivision siting and building design regulations consistent with HOP2? Yes, that should be one of the strategies for sure. And, and I'm going to in a few minutes maybe touch on this a little bit more. Okay. I mean, this is, this is sort of an iterative process. So I'm going to hold that thought for a minute. Um, but everything in the housing element is what we're building from. Yes, but I guess what I'm thinking is, as a commission, though, we need to we need to kind of know what our what our charter is in, in the review of this. What our what our yes. our purpose where we're, what our starting point is. Kind okay. Of. And yep. So that would be helpful to have that clarification. Okay. I guess. Okay. And we'll so. This is the job I will give individuals as we're doing this. So you've picked up on a theme that's important for you. We can't lose that. Mm -hmm. Your job is, as we're going along, keeping you to a point where you feel like that point is not lost. I would agree that to the extent that, and that the rest of the commission doesn't disagree. I mean, right. I, if, if I'm off base, I would expect right. And you know, everybody speak up, but I, I really right. want to understand the, the, mm -hmm. the foundation and the context of what we're trying to do and kind of, right. and again, what our starting point right. is. I think a lot of thought's been put into the comp plan with mm -hmm. all of those policies, yes. goals, and actions. And so we're not, my thought would be we're not stepping back and rethinking that. And, and we're that, taking and that exact, next Exactly. Step. That's, that's really important. We are not trying to revisit the comp plan. Thank you. Right. Okay. We could probably share with the microphones if we can use the mic. Well, one really close together, I would recommend you share it. Okay. Yeah, sure. um, two quick questions. So, 
the prioritization of the strategies. Is that something we're doing in a vacuum? You mentioned that it was going to be based on data. I can see that certain things like maybe low income housing, we have data on the city, but things like clustering, that's going to be a more nebulous topic. Yes. Is that handled by us in a vacuum? Are we getting council and staff input on those prioritizations or are we going back to the public to try to feed? Okay, this is what I'm going to say. Hold that thought and in 30 minutes see if we're starting to address it. Okay? So we'll see. We're, we're going to try and we'll see. We're going to offer you ways for getting input and hopefully after we um, get a little bit more into the framework of this, this process, some of this stuff. This, these questions might, we're almost like, it sounds like let's move on from the context and let's start talking about a strategy. So, um, and I think that's about where we are, but I, yes. Before we move on, this is an update of the 2011 plan. Is this something that happens every five years or? Which, the strategy plan? Yeah. Uh, well, the, uh, roughly, uh, yeah. there's, there's no mandated, um, uh, scheduled for updating like there is with the comp plan, which is every seven years. Right. Is there, what, I was going to say, some cities, this is where I have to look at your specific language for your strategy. Does it have a time frame with it? Not that I am aware of. So some, if you, when you read it, you didn't see a time frame. There's no explicit, okay. but if you go, that's why I made the comment in the countywide planning policies when they have an appendix that's sort of coaching people, it kind of says four to five years. Okay. So. I would say with the time frame, some cities have said we want it more frequently than the update to the comp plan. Some have thought it goes hand in hand with the comp plan. That's part of, you know, when you're done, one of the things that if you guys come to an impression of how long before you revisit this after you, and I'd almost say hold that question for when four months from now, when you're really starting to get a better feel for what this is to go, hmm, we should be doing this again in X years, okay? Um, that would probably be a good question for us to ask, not tonight, but after you get a better handle on what we're kind of moving towards. But some people think it should be three years, because um, once you get the framework one done, like Kirkland does it every three to four years because they had a format they liked, and for them it's like a two or three meeting when they do the update. They go, okay, what did we get done here, and let's look at the list, and what do we want to do next? And they do it pretty quick once they've been, you know, and then every, now this year they want to do a big full-blown one again. But some of the times the updates can be pretty quick kind of cycle. Would it be uh, useful to, I mean, I, I would assume that probably the majority, if not all of us, were not on the Planning Commission the last time this discussion took place? Correct. Is there a way that we can see in, in retrospect how the planning that was done five years ago has been implemented to see if, mm -hmm. I, I guess kind of as a benchmark to see how well we did it. So you're making me feel good about our outline for tonight okay. <laughs> because we're not even trying to get into strategies Excellent. tonight or data tonight. We're talking about process and stuff. So, But, but in terms of, you know, for example, mm -hmm. how, how did the how did the implementation of the downtown plan um, achieve the right. goals of the, of the strategy and, of, the, of right. the HSP? Is that something and, we're going to talk about? And I think what I would say is, is that um, not as much maybe as it might this next go round. And in fact, this is one of the reasons that the countywide planning policies were changed and added this iterative process is to put more conscious language to guide cities to say, keep working on this. Don't write a comp plan and disappear for seven years. And that was, right, uh, we felt like that was the biggest void we saw is cities would do a comp plan and then they wouldn't necessarily do a lot of follow-up. And so this is really, and, and your council has embraced the idea of doing that, has our, how many are we working on, Mike? Right now? Yeah. Five? Yeah, we're working on at least five right now. We got two more in the wings for next year. So, and that's because everyone just finished their updates a year ago or so of their housing element with the new county. And so most of the cities didn't have a policy to do a strategy plan or a strategy or whatever you want to call it. Um, that's a new addition to most of the comp housing elements is to say, hey, we're going to do this follow-up step. So that's, this is kind of new process. So keep, uh, we're going to transition. In fact, we're sort of transitioning to some of your questions now. You'll notice this slide, we didn't list all your goals and policies, but what we did do is we listed here are your housing goals. And so the point we're trying to make here is the point you were making, uh, Commissioner Clark, is that the purpose of this is to build upon the work of the comp plan. 
And so we did give you the housing element. And so we're first homework assignment is for you to read again the housing element and read it carefully. And what we will do is uh, we just gave you sort of here the, to show you tonight, here are the range of topics that are covered in your housing element. So there is neighborhood vitality, there is affordability, there is special needs, there is regional, you know, regional cooperation, there is implementation and monitoring. Um, those are your, and then variety of housing choices. Those are your major themes that you address in your, um, in your comprehensive plan. So our first step when we finally get past the first few meetings of, not even, we're not even gonna get into strategies for a few meetings. Um, but when we come to you with that list, the first thing we will fill in is how does it correspond to your housing, your policies, and all of your policies and goals. There will be right next to it, and in fact, I will go to the next slide, because this is a page, you have this in your packet, and you can see that the way we did it for you, um, the way you did it the last time you did this is at the end of each strategy, there is a policy in parentheses. And in some of them, there is more than one policy that it is, would be helping to implement, okay? So one of the things that we will also do is we will do that in the reverse direction. At some point, we will also take your policies and see if there are strategies that are linked to each policy. And in fact, if that's something you, th and that might be something given your comments, Commissioner Clark, you'd like to almost see that up front to make sure it does feel like it's building upon, right? Um, and so that's a step that maybe from your comment I would think we would wanna do, is we do it this way just so that people can go in that direction, but also go the other direction as well. Quick question. Yes. So I wanna make sure that I understand the homework correctly. Yeah. Okay. So at the end of each strategy, the policy is listed in parentheses or yes. italics? In parentheses. Is there an example of it up here? Yeah, HOA4 for sub-area plan. Oh, okay, because the first box, okay, the first box is where we're, la we're listing the language from the housing element. And then the strategies, so the f that box there is just restating the language from the housing element. The le then below it are strategies that we feel are basically in the category of housing choice. Okay. And so at the end of each of those, so you see there's a B1 and a B2 and a B3. Yeah. At the end of each one of those, there's a figure in parentheses. Oh, that's your reference. That's the it's reference. It's not spelled out. It's Correct. Just, it's just It's just a okay. reference that All way. Right. thank you. And so what we can also do is a similar chart that lists your policies, and once we have strategies, it would show you, you know, we'd say, okay, strategy B1 and B2 are consistent with policy HOM or whatever that one, uh, A4 or whatever, okay? So that way, because that's one of the things we want to check is to make sure, oh, what happened to these two policies? They don't have any strategies. Why not, you know, kind of mm -hmm. thing. So uh, we'll want to make sure that the master list, now you may not have a, then you have to prioritize, but we want to make sure that you feel like we have the range of things to look at. Um, and so this is just, I think it's about an eight page document that your last one was. And so the exercise was to build, you know, we, you know, is to build from looking at your basic comprehensive plan goals and policies is to build a list of strategies. And so the idea is, is, is that you may have 20, goals and policies and you're gonna have probably 60 strategies, okay? And they're gonna be, um, these are all ones related to housing choice. So you can see here there was um, other ways, consider other approaches for the last one on the page within the RAC designation to require, encourage, promote, provide incentives for housing that provide a variety and range of types of affordability. So that's, so that's saying look at that zone specifically. Um, you can see for mixed use, there's a sub bullet. Now you'll, one of the other things too you'll see is under B2, that there is some, there's a, a big statement and then there's a couple bullets. And that's because sometimes maybe there's getting a little more nuanced. And so you might be three or, like under accessory dwelling units, there could be three or four things you could do that would help promote accessory dwelling units. And so 
we will start out with sub bullets for them. And you can either choose, like what we find is the commission will say, hey, they're all important, so we're gonna just rank the whole ADU, or they might say, oh, of the four, these two seem really important for us, and those are the ones you rate higher, kind of thing. So we will, and, and there will be a number of places where we'll even, there'll be a couple tier, tiers of level of what the strategy and how specific it gets, okay? So what you did here is what happened was that we had, we listed the strategies, then we said what kind of action is it? Um, and different cities have done these sections, have done them differently, but here it was sort of, these are all regulatory, but some would be regulatory, which means it'll go through commission and council and that kind of process. Others will maybe just say city council. Those are usually funding type programs. You know, that's in the purview of the council. They don't, they don't send that off to someone else. Others will be sort of support where it's a regional effort and we say, and it might be staff. That's the relief because there's no action the council, the city has to take other than cities, you know, to participate in a regional entity. So that's where we're trying to give a feel for what does it take to implement that strategy. Um, then we then do this next section here, and this is where we say, what, how does that affect affordability? Does it affect just market housing, or does it also have some impact on affordability? And if so, do we know what level of affordability it might impact? Okay. Um, the purpose of that is so that when we're this page, because it's regulatory, those are usually more in the median and moderate. Remember when we did your land, we said, that's not going to get you down to low income. That's going to get you this range. But what we're hoping is when we're done and you have all eight pages, we're hoping that there's priorities that affect all income levels. That it's not all skewed to just market or all skewed to just very low income, that you have a range of housing needs. So you hope that your high, the ones that sit towards the top are covering a range of different needs. Now, what another city did recently, and this is something we'll be exploring with you over the next few meetings, is they added categories for populations. Is it gonna help seniors? Is it gonna help young families? Is it gonna help first time home buyers? So that's another way that um, you might wanna collect, you know, sort of be able to sort of think about strategies. And then another st study we just worked with, they added another set, and we're gonna come back to you and ask you a question about that. Um, is are there other things that should be important as we're looking at this, okay? And I'm just gonna leave it at that at the moment, but they came up with like four or five, like timeliness. Like, oh, you know, this is, for our community right now, you know, they, in Kenmore they said, hey, Sound Transit is ST3 just passed, and they're talking about the park and ride lot, and one of our strategies is about creative reuse and multi-use of publicly owned land and things like that. Maybe we better make that a higher priority because we want to go to ST3 in the planning stages if we have any ideas. So that's an example of timeliness, okay? Um, so that was one that they had, what were the other categories that they sort of added? So timeliness was one. Uh, public cost. Right. Was another one. Um, Step up the mic. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Public cost. See, now I'm not going to be able to remember the other side of the mic on. <laughs> um. Well, we'll give you examples, but they, they came up on their own with um, some other things that they thought were important to think about. And that's part of the next few me meetings, is we want to almost talk about that kind of stuff before you start looking at specific strategy. What's important to think about as you get into the exercise of evaluating? And so they, what we did is we went back and we looked at um, different strategies and stuff. So let's, so there's any questions about, and then the final is, the commission came up with the last column. In other words, we came in and we filled in, you know, we came in with all the ideas and we got input from you and we, and the staff did that and the staff filled out the type of action and the staff sort of filled out what we thought the impacts were. But the last column, that's ultimately, that was the job of the commissions and the council is to say, okay, now that we have this big list, how, you're the ones who are gonna come up with the sifting and, and deciding. Now you'll know, and one thing I would note here, and this is an important point we're gonna come back to in a few minutes, is you'll notice some of them, it says done. And we didn't pull it out of the strategy, we just said it's done. Because the city in the previous five years had done 
um, you know, some code action. And so what we were trying to accomplish there is to note something that had been done, which then going forward in the future should mean is that something we need to monitor to see how well it's working? Is it achieving what we thought it might have done or what it was? So um, because you're not starting at square zero here. There are things you, the city has been doing the last 10 years. So if you've taken action on something, the purpose of the plan isn't necessarily, or the strategy isn't necessarily, um, and what we're finding is some, it evolves maybe into some summary documents that really highlight your priorities. But part of this is to have a complete list of the full range of strategies, and some of them you might say are low priority just because they don't seem like they're a good fit or other things are more important. Other things say, well, we've done them. But you don't take them off the list. In fact, Kirkland's goal is to get, ha they use happy face for done. And their goal is to get a whole lot of happy faces over, over time on their plan and stuff. But it acknowledges your efforts. It's a way to document the things you have been doing, but it also may also give you a clue on things that you should be monitoring as well. So we encourage cities not to take things off, but to note them and, and how they're playing out in your community. And if, if I can elaborate, I, I think it, it would probably be more accurate than to say that that is done, yeah. is that we have done taken at least one step towards that. Right. So uh, on, on those two on this page that are listed as done, uh, the, that refers to some code amendments that were made to establish the residential activity center zones. Right. But since then, we've done much more. The downtown plan right. went a step further and has actually succeeded in seeing some of that, uh, you know, spurring some of that kind of development. Um, uh, so, so we may right. kind of look at uh, uh, phrasing that a little bit different. And, right. yeah. and, and, or it may mean, because this has been five or six years, well, maybe you want, how did it work? Should we do some more? Is it like, hey, we're halfway there. Let's do the other half if there's something that feels like from experience we're saying. So Kirkland, like Kirkland does this all the time. They're making a list of things, issues that have come up. And so when they get to their update, they bring, the staff brings in a list of 12 things. Well, we did this, but we think we'd still need to do some cleanup to it. So because it's cleanup or something, oh, gee, we implemented this, it's not working quite the way we want it. So they go right back and they say, so we, we think, we're suggesting you, there's some cleanup needed here for it to get to where we want it to go. So sometimes things that you've started are good things to prioritize unless they're working really well. If they're working really well, you think, great, they're still working well, it's doing what we want. Good, let's just, you know, we'll revisit it. Other ones, and this is where staff, and this is where we rely on you and staff more than us of knowing the day-to-day -day stuff in the city or if you hear people come in and say, hey, we've heard people come into the hearings and say, this zone doesn't work or this is, you know, we're having problems with this issue and that issue. That's the kind of input we need to that you need in order to decide if some of these things we've said we've worked on need more work. Oh, and Arthur, uh, so um, that's a question I have. I guess this is kind of a big overview. Maybe this is a question for next week or mm -hmm. two weeks out or whatever, but it's something I kind of want to know more up front and I'm tr trying to figure out. So this isn't part of the code. Uh, so we, we will spend a lot of time on the strategy plan. Then how is it reviewed? How does it, um, how does the action happen after that? I mean, how right. is it that, because obviously if, uh, I, I've seen that most, time is limited for people and for mm -hmm. community development and for a number right. of people. And so they generally kind of point people to the code. And so then there's this other kind of quasi the HSP over here that's not actually part of the code. Mm -hmm. So I know we're gonna be spending a lot of time on this. So I guess just in the, down the road, I wanna figure out more of how this is picked up. And because and, I, I was looking at, it, <laughs> Uh, and I'll, I'll be talking about one thing that's really near and dear to me with regards to this. And it seems to be kind of a high priority, but I feel like in the city of Bothell, it's, 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 not, it's not being addressed very well. Mm -hmm. And so um, j just with regards to, uh, I'll just put it out there, it's regards to, uh, to home preservation, okay. single family residential homes, okay. uh, especially with regards to maybe new developments and integrating into neighborhood feels. Um, so I want to figure out a way to Try to make that happen. I feel, and, and maybe maybe my feelings are incorrect and not and not based on fact, but I, I feel like I've seen a lot of, um, say, ramblers that that maybe some consider to be kind of outdated housing or whatever. But mm -hmm. I think fulfill a huge need uh, for a big part of the community, especially people who are aging, um, and on the affordability level. 
you could still develop and try to maybe integrate that in. And I feel like that was, I read through this and preservation was a big part of this even when it was done before by, this, by the uh, previous um, mm -hmm. commission. And so, so I'm like, well, why doesn't that happen then? Right. Like w they made it a, a big priority, but it doesn't seem like it, right. it happens. As, you know, I know there's a lot of, it's nuanced. There's a lot of things going on for community right. development to think about. So who right. is addressed with picking this back up and kind of implementing what we decide here? The council. Okay, the council. Okay. Yep. Ultimately, the council through work program or activities and how much people consciously remind them that, right, you hear the things. And so that's why I think some, what we found more, when we did this, it was as much, I think, you know, to some extent it was done because it was part of how they got through the court hearing. They said they do this and they did it and we took a long time to do it. And, and I think we're trying, what we've seen some of the commissions do is you created this big long matrix, which everyone has done, but others have sort of said, now we're gonna create this shorter three pager that really emphasizes the most, to really make stand out the things we think are really most important so that there's something really short and sweet and there it is and everybody here. And so hopefully they'll get onto work program because right, the strategy plan doesn't create the implementation of that strategy, it just tries to get it on the work program so that all that code, the codes are looked at and they are amended. We're not gonna, if we were trying to have the solutions to the things you're gonna prioritize, we'd be going three to four years here. Yeah. And the idea here is let's do this analysis to get the things that you think should rise to the top that will then for the next two to three years be things that should get worked into the work program for the city. I think just as, along with that, one of the things we have to keep in mind is that as you, you mentioned earlier, you said uh, the city doesn't build housing. You know, um, and, and that's true. We, we put policies in place that right. try to encourage certain things to happen, but it's really the market that determines what gets right. built. And, and, and your example of ramblers versus mm -hmm. two-story homes and daylight basements right. and that kind of thing, a lot of that is strictly a market thing. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of there's a lot of details that go into um, what sort of housing you can build and, and is it affordable? Is a rambler mm -hmm. in this day and age? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I love ramblers too. I'd love to live in one, but they're expensive to build. You know, on a square foot basis, so they're not always an option for um, for people to purchase anymore. So I think there is that element of we gotta we do have to implement <coughs> strategies and make code modifications that thing, but we have to keep an eye on which of these are really uh, have a realistic chance yes. of actually being used yes. you know and, and, and the clustering ordinance is one of those things that comes to mind or the PUD ordinance is, comes to mind in that context is if we're going to craft something we have to make sure that we craft something that will be utilized yes so I don't think we can really force people to utilize something like that it mm -hmm. has to be it has to be good enough to to ask I have one more quick thing sorry Jeannie um a more general question, because I, I, it sounds like we're going to do this over the course of several meetings, so I want to make sure we have the, the, the framework put together. Yeah. You're um, up on the board, the, the screen there, you have that uh, item B, housing choice, and after, after it there are a whole bunch of goals, policies, mm -hmm. and actions listed in parentheses. Mm -hmm. I, maybe I think I might have discovered the source of my confusion on that. We, I think, as part of the comprehensive plan um, review process last year changed. It, it, oh, we didn't yeah. used to have a housing and human services right. element. Is that right. correct? Yeah, yeah. Are those HO and LU referencing what those the HS HHS used to be called? HHS. H yeah. yeah. HO is house was housing the old separate okay. housing element. We used to have a human uh, services element uh, as well, uh, and LU is land use. Um, Okay, so I guess right. my question then is, if we did that update on the comprehensive plan and change that section or the, the mm -hmm. that, that um, part of the comprehensive plan to a different name, this it seems yeah. to me just just for clarity's sake, this thing should yes. be this consistent is just, with that. Is that yes. Right? Oh yeah. This That's is just the, we just Xerox last time. This is not meant. This to is say. the existing one. And the, I understand. The, so that we're, right. that's yes. what we're doing. We're so the answer is yes. So yeah. Okay. So I guess from my standpoint to review what we're looking at, it would be really helpful to do at least whatever we can to get it up to date for oh, the starting point. We will. Okay. Yeah. When we, right, when we start okay. it over again, we'll work from the old, we may add new strategies in, but we will change any reference to be consistent with the current. 
I guess what I'm saying is that it's hard. It, you, you've included the new HHS in, in this packet right. as, a, as a text attachment right. one. Yeah, so you can't cross-reference now. You can't so, cross-reference. So, right. That, that can be uh, one of the first steps okay. that we do. Yeah, we just that, just yes. change those references right. as of as I know, and I can imagine that that's probably a pretty daunting task, <laughs> but I do think no, that's it, actually a pretty easy one. That's is it really yeah. okay? Well, that that would be great to see yes. that because because I think um, <coughs> the cross referencing, at least for me, is mm -hmm. is no, no. really important yes. just to no, really no. understand the context. It'll be based on current. Okay, thank you. Two quick things. So, uh, I understand what Commissioner Eric is saying, but. Uh, um, were you saying finding ways to preserve existing homes like re, uh, in Ramblers, f finding ways exactly. to prioritize Thanks for clarifying. Yeah, I was, just, okay. I was, I was going to interject in that I, I wasn't talking about necessarily, I mean, if a developer wants to create Ramblers, they can do that. I'm talking about uh, preserving. I know they're very desirable because I know a lot of older people in the community right. are, are actually moving out of their two-story homes that they can't age into. And uh, so it's preserving the, the current stock and not, 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 saying the developer should which, actually build them. Which so. brings me to my second point. It, it, as we list priorities, that might be one of them, is how do we preserve and encourage existing homes. Yeah. So my, 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 my second part of my uh, question or request or a thought to toss out there is, you're saying 12, we'll come up with 12 priority, 12, or, 12, or whatever that magic mm -hmm. number is. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible for the record to include the whole, uh, an abbreviated inventory of what that, of, of what we pulled those out yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. No, that so, so that yeah. 10 years down yes. the road right. when people, you know, new faces are here, they'll go, yes. what was the component missing? What were they thinking about? Oh, they yes. should have included yes. or something like that. I guess, well, yes, totally. Okay. Um, and that's what I was alluding to earlier is like, even if you don't drop it, just make it a low. And that's why I'm saying that I think some of the commissioners um, that we've worked with have kept this big long matrix and not got rid of that, but that can sometimes lose the things you're really trying to prioritize. So they created a second document to really emphasize the things that rose to the top. Okay. Okay. Then you have I just didn't want all that brainstorming great. to go for naught. If there was great little point. gems buried we, there and we would, not in the top. We would strongly list. advise that approach. Okay. Uh, quick question. Um, I know your knowledge expands beyond King County, but you guys are tasked with just looking at King County. When we're using data to influence some of these mm -hmm. strategies, are we going to have information from Snohomish County, neighboring Snohomish County cities to throw in the mix? We can do that. If that's what you need, okay. then yes. I mean, I don't know that it's going to be a big difference, right. but I just want to make sure that we're so that's goal. that's very related to one of our last questions so that's and what we'll ask is in order to keep some sanity for us is let's be really intentional um, but yes if you need data from other areas and stuff of course we should collect that i would agree i think i think it will be relevant yeah. <coughs> I, I, think, I think very much for you bothell's right. one of i think only two or three cities in the state that that yes. straddles the county line yes. so we're pretty unique in that way but I hear you saying, asking not just for data, but also for the perspective, the whole approach Absolutely. to the follow, uh, strategy. Uh, to right. I, th I think Thank we need to make sure that we're considering the needs of right. every resident. Yes, Ex uh, totally. Yeah. And and that that's one handicap we have because you're the only city that we have to get that. But you, that's your, that's what you're, you are. So that's what we need to do yeah. and help you do that. And I guess that brings up a. A question in my mind is it so we're looking at the King County countywide planning document is that what we're looking up there we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at both right yeah. okay so we'll and I guess in your experience is there any conflicting direction between those two plans or do you anticipate that or is I it don't general so. enough to where I mean okay it, I worked in Snohomish County in the past before they updated the actually I was part of updating the CPP I don't know. I okay yeah, so we're lucky to have Mike because he did work in Snohomish County for a while, so he's pretty familiar with their history. Do, do you, does Arch have a counterpart in Snohomish County? Sort of. It's sort of a fledgling group that started a couple years ago. 
And, and we may, uh, I just made a note to myself to uh, invite them to one of these sessions. But sure. It's the Housing uh, Development Consortium, right? Oh. Well, there's two different groups okay. in Snohomish County. One is a group that's like the, uh, the housing advocates, and they should be there. But there's also a partnership of some of the cities, too. So there's, there's two different groups now in Snohomish County. Which would be more similar to ARCH, which is kind Correct. of a partnership of cities. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Particularly if they're a fledgling group and they're trying to get off the ground, we have a... We have mm -hmm. a unique opportunity as a two-county city to, to probably assist them to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's very good points. This is exactly the kind of stuff we're looking This is what tonight's for, is to sort of get into that. So if I could move to the next slide, and which he's, he's already decided we're moving to the next slide, so good. So what we've tried to do here, and first, the first word is most important here, draft. We're just... Trying, you know, we're going to throw something out there to sort of lay out. And in fact, there's one or two of these that we're saying, if you want outreach, we'll just stop right now. But later tonight, we want to come back to that issue. So we're, what we're trying to do is figure out a way to mesh together the different um, pieces that we think will help you get to a point where you're comfortable with what you have. So what we're tonight is meeting number one, which is really just a context of what we're trying to do and, and help you see the overall process. The next meeting is when we would, um, the next meeting is for you would be needs. This is a data meeting. Just talk about data. And um, we have some, you know, it'll, you'll have some homework in advance. We're going to have some questions for you. But it's a way for you to chance to look at from a housing point of view, a demographic point of view. And we're going to ask you before we leave tonight if there's particular data that you think we should talk about. And just talk about, get a lay of the land of the needs from all the work that's been done in the past or some additional work. Um, now, you'll see in between those two meetings, we have staff doing preparation. And part of that is around outreach. And you'll notice that we start having intertwining schedule-wise your work with some efforts to provide you outside input. And we want to come back to that and decide what kind of input that will be. But we start having that, we want, we think it's important to have that um, once we get the strategies to you, you may not need it for the first time you start start strategies, but right about the time you're starting to talk about the strategies, start getting some input. And so the groups that we just mentioned, it might be ones. And we'll come back and talk more about that later tonight, is there's a variety of different things different cities have done. Some have done very limited. Others have done more, and so we want, and some of it might be dictated. You might want to do something, and we'll say, well, we don't know if there's a budget to do something like that. But we want to at least open it up to you um, in, a few, in a little bit tonight and talk about where does outreach fit into this. But we think where it does fit in is right when you jump into the strategies is a chance for you to get other perspectives, um, and that might be bringing people in. It might be going out to the community. It can be both, it, you know. Or a combination. It can be some focus groups where we do interviews of different cross sections of people. So we'll come back to that and talk more with you about that. And then we basically have this, and this is also at the time meeting three. We, we call it housing objectives, and this is where you had said earlier something that helps give you context for starting to evaluate the strategy. So we're not. That's the funniest. That's the meeting we've had the hardest time knowing exactly what's going to be the best thing for you. But the idea behind that is after you, this meeting and we talk about data a lot, is there something that help? or there's some priorities, like Ken Moore came up with those priorities. Is there something that's going to help you start to say, ha, with having this is going to help me when I start thinking about strategies and what we're trying to do? And I have been collecting the different things different cities have done at that step, and they're very different, different things. So. That's probably what, and that's where you'll notice that's where we start having some input or whatever. Um, this is where you get a chance to try to frame what's going to help you review the strategies over the next three meetings after that. Okay? And that's when we hand out the strategy list. Okay? That'll just be a master rough list that we're saying this we think is the base of things for you to choose from. Okay? Um, and so that's like about the third meeting. Then you can see we basically have three meetings of one we and we have one of those where we think you know we say panel input on strategy so we we have assumed you'll probably at some point want to have a panel of some people to give you comments that from their points of view 
Uh, but outside of the meetings, we also show opportunities for other forms of outreach, okay? Um, and then the idea is, so for one and a half meetings, it's not, it's mostly just talking through the strategies. And then there's a couple meetings where you actually try to do that sorting process, okay? And we're hoping that through about six meetings, and maybe it's a seventh meeting, you can get to a point, and we think the meeting should be about every three weeks. Um, so we, we want to keep it relatively fresh, but we need enough time between meetings to try to help if there's things that need to be pulled together, okay? We were doing one on a two week, and it always felt like we just didn't have enough time to respond to the stuff in one meeting that to then help you in the next conversation. So, um, so that's assuming around the three week frequency, might be a little, there might be somewhere we can go two weeks apart because it's just a continued conversation, but that's something that we'll work with you and staff on as it goes forward. We do also have a check-in um, with the council before you start getting in, you know, and I think we're, and this might tie in with some other things that staff and where you guys might have a joint meeting and given the priorities, but that's where we'll work with staff. But an idea of being able to check in with council before you show up in the end, so if they have some perspectives, you've had a chance to hear what those are so that a little bit of guidance from the council as you're doing your sorting process. Of those six meetings you have listed there, mm -hmm. are there, which ones do you anticipate being study sessions versus public hearings or are there any public hearings related to this? That's an interesting I, question. Yeah. If you, you um, I would say it can be done in a way in which you can take comment at any meeting if you want, right? It's on the agenda, you can do that. And whether or not, that's something, that's one of the things we should talk about is do you want to have an explicit public hearing before you pass it on? Um, I would say more times than not, um, see, that they probably have done that. Um, and I'd also say that this is a topic, this, this product isn't one that usually garners huge amounts of people showing up. But that doesn't mean there aren't there are some people who do like to you know weigh in on this stuff. But but ob obviously, even if it is a study session, the mm -hmm. public is allowed to come and, right. and talk and right. Okay. Well, right. you know, in general, uh, testimony isn't taken at at study sessions. But we we can we can uh, the planning commission can choose to take uh, or to invite public testimony even if it's not a public hearing. Um, you know, our typical process, code amendments, we usually have one study session and then a series of uh, uh, public hearings that right. get continued. We could do that, treat this the same way, uh, but I think there might be some advantage in uh, continuing to, you know, have a, a more informal um, structure uh, as we work through this process. So it's, yeah. uh, which is kind of what we did with the downtown plan, I don't know how many of you participated in that, but we had a whole series of roundtables, so we could look at all these meetings as similar to those roundtable meetings. So. I, I was wondering if that you've got listed in February, March, neighborhood outreach meetings, are, is, is one possibility for that? I mean, is that actually, um, would that take the form of a public hearing, or is that just, how, how would, that, what would that look like? That's, what, uh, go ahead. It could, but it could also be uh, not even be a meeting, I mean, a, a planning commission meeting itself. It could be right. going out to other groups. Right. And, yeah. For example, there's a group called KBIG. Have you heard of them? It's Interfaith Group for Kirkland <coughs> Bothell Interfaith Group. KBIG. And one of their leaders is on my advisory board. And she was calling me because they were organizing a meeting through them of people from the community and they wanted to talk about housing. And I said, well, let me bring this up tomorrow night because maybe there is a link and you could use that group as, uh, you know, they have a group and they meet outside City Hall and a workshop more like, you know, so it's not a formal commission meeting and invite and some of you could come or just, okay, tell us what you hear. So there's, and that's what we want at the end of the meeting, a little bit here, talk more about, uh, about that is how do you want that interact? What are the forms of interaction that you think would be helpful for you so that we can then between now and the next meeting, see what we can come up with a more explicit plan on outreach for you that feels like you feel like you're getting the right kind of input, okay? I had, and I had the same thoughts, I guess, with regard to the, how the public hearing process overlays with this and in terms of 
you know, public outreach? Can we, can we merit, without wanting to make this too complex mm -hmm. of a process for, for everybody involved, but um, it certainly seems like there are some groups in the community that mm -hmm. might have a particular interest in this. Mm -hmm. um, can we do some outreach with those groups, maybe mm -hmm. even before we have our, yeah. just to get them to the meetings, right. the public hearing, and oh, okay. maybe with some specific questions for them, so that it's not, you know, it doesn't right. turn into a, you know, just a kind of a rant dialogue or whatever. But if there's some mm -hmm. specific information that we could request from those sure. groups, sure seems like, you know, there's a lot of people right. in our community that um, have been involved for a long time and, and might have some really good input for us. So that and and it's a call right right where uh, what we're doing right now or they're doing and, um, is they're calling them focus groups, and they've met with business small business, big business, they've met with faith community, um, they've met with social service agencies, and yeah. they, we have a series of questions. We go in, commissioners are invited, and for each one, one is showed up. They don't have to, I think one, no, but none of the commissioners showed up. Um, and we just had a conversation with them for about an hour, kind of thing. But we could also do what you're saying, yeah. is make sure people are aware when you're meeting to see if they want to come in. So that's, and that's about, that's the easiest thing to do, because those groups, you know, you help us identify who you want us to talk to. It doesn't take a lot of preparation. Um, we can share with you if you want, if I email, here are the questions we came up with. Are there other questions that you want us to ask? I mean, that's probably about the easiest form versus like a community work group. But the community work group might meet because of KBIC. They already were trying to organize something. So, um, and I mentioned this and they said, they originally were going to do it in January, and I said, well, what if February worked? Could you do it in February if that works better for this? And they go, happy to think about it. Yeah. So they, they, in fact, they want me to call tomorrow and say, gee, should we keep talking with you guys about coordinating this together? Um, yeah, I like, I like the simple approach, mm -hmm. and it, as soon as we can get that information in this process, I think the better because right. I, frankly, okay. I, don't, I don't know all the angles on this stuff, and so okay. it would be really good to hear from, okay. from folks. Yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, I think it's a great idea to have these workshops. And also, if we're reaching out and maybe identifying groups, the people that we want feedback, right. maybe we'll get more than just the few that would r right. randomly wander yes. into a meeting. Right. Um, and that's what Issaquah did. Is we came up with lists of people and called them and said, we want you to come to a meeting at a time that we're, you know, here's, let's find the time where you come in that's, you know, daytime if that's what they need. So we, that's the approach Issaquah uses to actually go out to groups of people and say, we need to talk to you. Yeah, and if we have these work groups or workshops, however you want to phrase mm -hmm. it, um, I'd be in favor of keeping this format. I think wading through it, it's nice to kind of look and look around and sort of dive into the details as opposed to okay. sitting up there. Um, as long as we don't uh, constrict any public feedback, like through these other means, I think this right. is the way to go. So, so this is, I'll, I'm gonna put some terminology out there so that you can distinguish between them, at least in my head, and hopefully we can, Focus group is when you reach out to a very, you know, you, you don't want more than six or seven people. You might have to do a couple, and they are specific background, and you interview the, the group. And so you have a list of questions, and you interview them, and it's that kind of conversation. A community workshop is when you open it up, and anyone can come, and you have to get a little more creative, and you got to figure out a way to get input, because it's harder, because people showing up will be all over the place but you're gonna do more community type exercise, open conversation, and hopefully, and a bigger group, hopefully. So you might, like Kay Big said, they get anywhere from 30 to 50 people to show up to their meeting sometimes. So that's a workshop. Usually it's gonna probably be in an evening or maybe it has to even be in a weekend. Gotta have a lot more materials kind of organized and figured out. Focus groups, list of questions, list of people, and sit down with them, okay? So I also think that the public involvement's an important aspect, but I think that we should try to go to these groups more than inviting them to come here, because okay. I think you get a completely different cross-section of the community, mm -hmm. and uh, we can extend the offer to have them come here as well right. if we open up a public hearing, but we should at least put the offer out there to, to go to them. Okay. okay. So yeah, that's a really good point, I think, to, to also just go out to the groups. I like, that was a very good, valid point. So, and then, with regards to all of these, generally when 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 um, commissions go out to groups or groups come to commissions, um, it, it, is it are we generally all going? Which which would be I mean which would be my desire. But and then ob obviously that would 
you would need noticing if there's four more of us <coughs> who are involved in the event, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so yeah. That, hopefully that doesn't cause a big, a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, paperwork, I should say, on your end to be able to not, do that. But, or, it shouldn't be a, a major, as long as we can um, plan it out far enough in advance. So, um, and we'd have to think about exactly how we do that, whether we would incorporate it into the imagine the monthly imagine notice, uh, and and uh, right. or or the other thing is that you could choose to just um, to spread the spread right. the work and and right. uh, and assign uh, two or three commissioners to go to uh, right. different groups. And I would and maybe encourage that only just carrying the form is you got your five or six, and somebody calls says, "Oh, could we move it up two hours?" And you go, well, let me check, and maybe we can. But we couldn't without all the proper noticing and stuff and um, kind of thing. And, and I would say when this was doing, they've only had one or two. You know, they actually, their review panel is three commissions. So they have a pool of 18 commissioners that are that we're doing it tomorrow night. I go back to them for their second meeting. Um, here, there's six of you, and, you know, if we do four or five of these groups, that's, you know, a fair amount of time. And... It just, I think it makes the logistics early easier if it were three or less. But if you are, you know, we do have on here panels, so bringing in some players into the room is also something we, I think, is pretty typical to do too. So that's just something probably um, for you to think about a little bit more. Um, and I'm, and just since we're on this topic, I, I just sort of want to revisit. See, you know, we're a little bit ahead of what I was going to do, but it's fine. Is yeah, just so. a quick question regarding the public outreach. So, this whole conversation, in my mind, I've been thinking more along the, the affordable affordable housing mm -hmm. part of this, and I know we're we're zooming out and we're talking overall right. housing. Is there? I mean, I already have some groups in mind who I know right. might be interested in this, but it's more than just affordable housing. Right. Is that correct? Is yes. There, is there something else we should be on a bigger picture? Right. I mean, housing in general? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, in fact, the, the current strategy plans uh, uh, starts out with the statement that it is about housing in general, not just affordable. But the one uh, area that Planning Commission recommended uh, uh, to Council, uh, it hasn't made it to Council just yet, uh, with the South Riverside, was that, uh, that the city should embark on a, a more um, a thorough assessment of its uh, specialized senior housing. Uh, so that I think is is definitely on the table. There may be other uh, other specific right. housing. So right. So this is um, overall housing. I think what we did here from council when we made a general presentation is affordability will get particular focus, but it is still all housing. So yes. Yeah, so groups we should think about not just affordability when we're thinking of focus groups or workshops or whatever. Thank you. Just back to uh, one of Commissioner Cecil's comments. How quickly do you think we can get this implemented? I, I don't want to get to the end either and then try to get feedback. I'd like to have sort of the public's interest in mind as we're going through this. Right. So does this reflect that? Well, if we're talking about these individual focus groups, yes. Um, if December, January public outreach, if you think we can do it that soon, then it, I guess it would. But it so, looks like right. you're talking January, February. After January, our second January February, and then you also know this February, March neighborhood outreach meeting. So, I mean, we're basically trying to say is from January through March could be a variety, depending on where this conversation leads to. That's the time window that we were looking at. And you'll notice that you don't, you know, you're reviewing strategies and getting up to speed on strategies through March. And it's about April, end of March and April and into the beginning of May, you know, through April is when you're going to start doing the sorting. So we were trying, I think what we were trying to show here is you should have a lot of the input before you start sorting and while you're evaluating strategies. Perfect. Okay. And Arthur, just one quick thing, not to belabor this, but because um, I think it is, a, it is a good point. I'm glad we're talking about it. Um, with the, is there, I guess, maybe what I would want to look at if, if the commission would be uh, in favor of it would be to... While I think going, I think actually there's nothing like going in person to groups, having some type of a form or something on the city website that, you know, some things we're thinking about that people who may not be able to attend a meeting uh, who could, you know, go to the website and fill out, and you, 
it could be as simple or as long as we wanted it to be um, with people and we can get a better feel of citizens and Bothell citizens and what they what they want so I, I think that's a great idea and, and I'm even thinking if <clears throat> maybe it's as simple as you know what aspects of the housing strategy plan are most important to you if they if they want to have input and then at least you know if uh, 99 of 100 people said it's all about affordable housing for us that would certainly I think, help guide us um, but I wonder if there could be a simple description on the on there and maybe um, maybe it's not a survey but it's a Q&A maybe just answer a few questions I guess that okay. technically is a survey but <laughs> um, this I, is this is snowballing just quickly interjecting because I know uh, social media especially here in the Bothell community is quite um, enthusiastic so maybe linking up city comment from the city on Facebook or Twitter could also put the word out that way because there are people out there with opinions we love social media mm -hmm. yeah I, I'm curious on this schedule is there a um, how hard and fast is the is the completion date of May or do we have some flexibility to do additional meetings or are, are we you're saying hey we, <coughs> did, the, did the council provide direction we want to hear back or have something finalized by May what what's the situation there so the Nothing's hard and fast. It is a draft schedule, so we're we're looking for your input on that. I don't think that we don't have any real uh, statutory deadline that we need to get this uh, uh, in place by, uh, and we uh, we may find out more. Um, uh, Arthur alluded to the uh, check-in with council in February. Uh, w one way we might do that is uh, through the joint. Uh, study session with council on the uh, 2017 planning docket so that could be a chance to report back to council on where we're at with uh, the with this this work and get their get their uh, input on on you know where we're at where where we're going and and uh, and perhaps they'll say well we'd like we'd like this to come to us before the August break for example Sure. And that that would then impose a certain deadline. Okay, and then uh, just one other thing. Um, I lost my train of thought. Go ahead, Arthur. I'll think of it. I, I guess a couple of thoughts. One, tagging on to this idea of a, some kind of a form. Um, what might help us as commissioners is if if you know, maybe you guys or maybe us as a group come up with a, a kind of a bullet list of questions that we would ask a group yeah. so that it's consistent kind of throughout. I think that would be helpful uh, to ex what expedite. We could do. What we could do is um, I can forward to you, if you're willing to take on this homework, the list of questions that Issaquah came up with that just help prime your pump. And then once you like, say yes. If there's others that come to your mind, but that might help. Um, now, um, yeah, this is, yeah, so I could do that. We could forward you the questions that they've yeah. been using. And I think that'd be great. I don't, I don't think that we necessarily all have to be asking the exact same questions, but if we can at least get oriented, right. you know. Right. Uh, and then the other question is, um, is this a formal kind of an outreach, or can we just take these questions and go talk to people that we know? Is this, is this something where we can just go out and get information and come back and report, or we have to kind of, you know what I'm saying? Because if, if it's more informal, I have more flexibility to talk to people I know in the community, but I, I don't want to be out of bounds of the, the process. What do you guys already do already? <laughs> I mean, that's what you, do you, you mean? represent different parts of the community. You, I mean, you do that all the time, yeah. and that's, that's normal to do. I think what we're describing to you is something, and I don't think this is meant to in any way stop you from doing what you do all the time on ideas. You talk to people in the community. Hey, we're working on this. What do you think, right? Um, what we're trying to do is give you some framework that you know you've got some explicit questions being asked of some, some specific components of people, profiles, whatever, of the community that will get written up and you'll have them, okay? And, and so that's the things we're talking about are more formal in the sense that you know what's being asked ahead of time. You can have input on what that is. If it's a community workshop, you know, there's going to be a formal agenda. But I, I'm assuming even you've already, because of your life experience of living in this town, you've already got a lot of that in your head already. 
So yeah, we, we certainly expect you to, to have informal discussions with your, your contacts. I think what we but I think need what to we're focus looking on for as a group is not yeah. is not a conversation of here's what this guy said. It's more of a right. here's a little bit of a summary, right. maybe so right. that we can right. that and information can be dispersed yeah. to all and, of us. And, so kinda and there's a second part, we're still on the first part of the conversation. These charts are here that might some things I want you guys to think about um, as you start getting into this. This is just, this is a more open ended, and I want to spend a little time tonight talking about. Um, and that might start getting a little bit at some of the themes you're doing here. But I, I guess that's a question you have to ask each other: is well, do you have you know the, you know how sometimes you have the cheat pocket set of questions? You all agree those are our cheat questions that when we're out talking to people. We should ask each other. I, that's your call, um, or just you know, I think for me, it's really more just for, for me right. to kind of keep on track. Right. I don't think we necessarily have to be right. dead right on the same track with everybody else, but for me, it would be much easier for me if I had a general list that might lead into a dialogue mm -hmm. off of those. Yeah. But and, and that's what I'm saying. If you have the focus group questions, if yeah. we're going to do those, and that would be, be that would probably help you in, in those as well. And, um, and, and where I was going, so beyond uh, talking with your own context, I think what we need to focus on with the outreach plan is what are what parts of the community aren't we reaching through your right. personal contacts? That, the, right. Those those are the groups that we we need to make sure that we we right. do connect with, or I, try to connect with. Yeah. I I agree, and I think that sometimes they do all these online open houses or questionnaires and use social media, and I think you really you get a good part of the population, but you're missing a big part of the population right. as well. And you spoke to the the senior over mm -hmm. overlay housing. And, uh, and I don't know how many seniors are using right. Facebook or Twitter right. to get their news. And so I think it's still important mm -hmm. to, uh, to go out to these communities. Right. I think maybe with the, the student housing issue, which I think is probably going to be a big part of this conversation, that might be a better tool. But uh, mm -hmm. I think that we just, you know, all of the above mm -hmm. when it comes to it. But I know that that can lead to a lot of work, you know, public meetings right. and public involvement, especially right. outside of this building take a lot of staff work, so I think we need to be selective, but also right. put the offer out there. So you've just, uh, Commissioner Hampton, hit on something I wanted to say when, to your question of, well, do we have a hard deadline, and the answer is no. This is one of these tasks that you'll never be totally satisfied. I can tell you that right now. You're going to always, oh gosh, I wish I could have some more. It's, it's some, and again, remember, that very first slide, this is a prioritization of things that your city should look at in more detail. And so, and that challenge there is wanting to know, gosh, is this the answer? And guess what? Given the level of needs out there, there's no single answer or two answers or three answers. <coughs> it's almost as much what does our community, what do we feel like from our community point of view? This isn't the end, right? It's what you just work on the first couple years. You're going to come back and revisit it. Mm -hmm. At some point, the issue is get working. And so I'm going to sort of impress upon you, I, you know, Input's important, but at some point, your job is to go to the council and say, here are five, you know, here's all these things. Here's the things to look at first. And you don't have to say, I know I like ADUs or don't ADUs, and what do we have to do with ADUs? It's, man, this, just given some of the needs we see out there and how that works, we ought to just study that. Or you say, no, we don't study it. And that's, that's why I'm saying that third meeting is to sort of hopefully get you more to a point of getting comfortable of our job isn't here to solve the problem. Our problem is to set the roadmap for starting to deal with it. And, and I think, like you said, to, to actually move forward, right. to, to make some progress. Because, right. you know, the words action and strategy to me are evoke that. They evoke actually right. making a decision and, and, and right. moving forward. Um, would, I remember the other question I had about, uh, about schedule is, and maybe Dave, you can maybe be able to answer this for us better than, than anybody, but we've got a bunch of things that are on our agenda on an ongoing basis. We've had the, you know, the Williamson rezone, we've had the clustering uh, issue or the clustering ordinance that we've been, right, gotten direction. We've had the miscellaneous downtown code amendments. Where does this fit in with, with all of those right. other things that are coming up and what what is the higher priority? And I'm assuming we're going to probably continue to meet on average three times a month. Is that roughly where we're at? So in your mind, is that all of these things that we have on our plate, is this a realistic time frame for us to get through this? 
in, in well, in that context? Uh, and in part, that's that's the question we're asking of, of all of you. And, and I'm going to touch on that in the report from staff tonight. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit. Uh, I know you've asked, ideally, for two to or ideally three months uh, of a, a work program calendar uh, with your packets. And we, we didn't manage to do, do that this time. Uh, so I do want to talk a little bit uh, then about what else is on the on your plate and, and how we're going to integrate all that. But it, I think it is going to mean uh, that during this period, you're going to need to do some multitasking. You're not going to be taking on one, one issue at a time and, and dealing with that every two weeks or e one or two issues. You might be juggling three different issues uh, over these. these at a, at a given meeting? Not at a given meeting, but, uh, uh, you know, in a given month, uh, well, and, and I think that's we. Yeah. I think that's pretty typical. But I, I'm also thinking a little bit about staff. Does the staff have the the time and the resources to to deal with all these things? Okay. I think they are. Some of them are. I'd be curious to know what what's the most important in terms of what does the council think, and and yeah. and do we can we get some feed, direct feedback from them? Well, maybe not even direct, but feedback through you about what. Of those things, what's more important, clustering or housing strategy yeah. plan? You know that kind of thing. I, I think we'll get that at that uh, that joint study session on the 2017 okay. planning docket. So that that may be a couple of months out still, but uh, uh, I, and I'm hoping we can move that up. But uh, uh, right now, it's they're looking at uh, late February for that session. Okay, and that's and that's part of where my sort of comment I made just before you asked that, which is. Again, keep in mind, we're not solving the problem now. We're trying to get the ball rolling, but give you enough to be comfortable doing that. And that's, you know. Yeah, and with regards to, I, I agree uh, with uh, Commissioner Clark about the action, uh, taking action on things rather than just talking about them for long, uh, many meetings at a time. And that, that's why I'm hopeful that I, I, I like this. I like what you put together here because I think we'll be able to talk to the council in February and hopefully be able to give them some pretty good idea of what kind of direction they're going to want to take so even before we've completed it. So this overall seems comfortable. We're meshing the right kind of things together in the right basic time frames and, and stuff. And you've given us some thoughts on outreach that we'll take and work with staff on and come back when we're doing the data and also sort of lay that out a little bit more clearly. But what would help, um, and I, and I, either later tonight, uh, depending on how we move along here in your time and stuff, um, but who are some of the groups that you're thinking about, okay? That would be, or, or people, individuals and or groups um, that we would be reaching out to would be really, really helpful uh, kind of thing. So if that's okay, I'd like to sort of transition to this sort of second theme, which is sort of what I consider to be um, considerations in putting together a strategy plan. And the first is that's where these charts are from. And how am I? You want me to scribe? Or? Sure. Yeah, if you want to scribe. And this is, this is something I do with neighborhood groups typically. Um, and there are two very simple. We're going to start with the chart that doesn't have the shading on it. And, and this is something that over the years has helped me and I think helps when I work with groups of people to start thinking about housing from a, a big picture point of view, a simple but big picture point of view, and, um, and then second, and then in the context of local government, okay? So the first question I have for you is what kind of households are in your community? For example, a married household with children is a first example. So you can write that down. I'm opening it up to you to tell what other kinds of households are, are there in your community? Not a trick question. Studio apartments? No, households. So this is the housing. I got a married couple with children. That's an example of a kind of household. Student. A student. A student. Okay, a student. student. A retired couple. Is, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. That's an empty nester. I think that sort of falls in the same. Yeah. I'll 
an empty nester long before I'm retired. Oh, okay, you got retired. <laughs> okay, you're right. Okay. You get a nerve there. Right? Gotcha. Yeah. Like, okay, you're right. <laughs> hey, we say you got that flexibility, but you got that right. Um, okay. Maybe elderly. Hmm. Elderly. Um, so not necessarily an empty nester, but later in life. Okay, so I got maybe I got a retired couple. So I'm going to just call a retired couple. You mean a single re senior? I'm going to call. Right, so seniors who are single, and we got, I'm going to call you got seniors who are couples, okay? Well, I guess that's true. I guess some people can retire at 65. I mean, so retirees can take on quite a Let's big range. Let's not make this too complicated. It's okay. It's not going to be perfect. Good point. Hmm? Single parents. Good. Others? So when you say single working, okay. Okay, but, no, but, but that's a pretty big difference from a housing point of view often is a single person single. who's younger, right, maybe? Is that what, right. working age? Or right, whatever. yeah, right. So working age. Mm -hmm. Do you wanna, do you wanna further break down working age or? You could do, um, yeah. I wasn't, wasn't yeah. planning to, but. Like twenty two to, right. so that to first thirty five that, right. that out of Yep. Okay. Yep. So you got the young single or the young household who's just starting out. Mm hmm right. Okay. What was the range? I threw out twenty two to thirty five and then we'd probably go thirty six to Okay. Retired. Thirty sixty five. Yeah, empty nesters and yada yada. Okay. How about the the dinks, double income no kids? Is that an empty nester? No, just young couples, no kids. Oh, young couple. Okay, yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. I still got one or two. You've got a list for two. I got, it's it's kind of like, you know, it's what's the show where you have to guess the, the answer, the response, survey says. What about assisted living situations? Well, that would be a form, that's not, I'm going to call that a single senior, but then they need assistance. So but someone who needs assistance. Oh, okay. like special needs, right? And that we're right. talking about yep. earlier? Because that Persons can be with special non senior. Needs. Yeah. Yep, that can be non seniors as well. Exactly. We don't have that in there, do we? No. Nope. Special needs. Nope. Put, special them down. needs. Put them down there. All right. So you got, right, you've got young and senior people with special needs. Younger, all different ages. Okay? I still got, I still got one or two. Group what about? Housing? What? Group yes, people living together. Yeah. Okay, very good. Still got one more. There families. may be more, but I got families with uh, with grandparents, yes. parents, large families, extended families, okay. as they call it in planning law. Right. So that gives you an idea, and and so. So, what's a housing plan? There are all these kinds of household types of people who might want different kinds of housing, and they are going to be at different income levels. And theoretically, you can put numbers in every one of these cells. Here, this is wireless. It's, you don't have a remote, I'll just do this, okay. So, so there's a number, okay? There's a number here in every one, you know, Y, Q, right? There's numbers here. And a housing plan, your goal is to have a supply of housing that matches up with that. That's an ideal housing plan. So that in a very simplistic way when you know all of these forms, it's you're trying to address needs in a community. And thinking about all these different, so it's almost as much about thinking about who are the people in the community and what kind of housing would meet their needs and understanding the incomes that these groups have and what kind of housing to fit. Okay. Arthur, when you're saying a number, you're saying there's 50 single seniors living here at right. the less than sixteen thousand exactly. dollars. So it's demographics. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. But that's you know it's not about I you know when I think about a housing plan, I don't think about I need this many single families. I think about who are we trying to get housed in our community, and what are their circumstances, and that should drive right. That's what helps drive thinking about a community's housing plan, okay? So that's part A. Now part B 
And this one I'm going to have to fill in here because it's going to have to play out a certain way. We talked about this earlier. And so on this one, it's who are the players that impact housing in our community? So, for example, Hello? architects. They design the housing. Okay, so I'm going to put designers here. And the reason I have to do this one is because I've got to have them line up in the right places. Who are other players that are affecting what happens, the, the housing that ends up in our community? Developers and builders. Okay, so you have the developer. What do you mean by landlord? Okay. Right, so that's, I, I group developer and owner in the same. Okay. So that's, because the reason I asked you, though, the reason I, I kind of asked a clarifying question. Um, but go ahead, that's, that's why I keep going. Labor. Hmm? Okay. In what role? Governmental regulatory. Regulate. So the regulator, right? Which is often, which is, okay, so that's usually government. Okay. What about schools, or is that more secondary? Or actually, I'm sorry, I, I probably, when you said regulator, you meant, like, for what? For city. Just I know, but for city permits, you mean? Or for? It's just a player that affects housing. Yeah, permits, zoning, the stuff we do. Ah, thank you. There we go. Now we're in shape. Now you can sit down. Okay, so you have permitting here is actually separate than a regulator. A regulator is someone who watches things after the fact. Okay, but you have per right, so you have permitting and planning. So right? So that's and that's often a local role too. Who else? There's a lot more. That's an interesting Sorry, one. What I about, don't. What um, about you know? Do, do you have the roads? That's that's roads a to really suspect. you know that's a good one, and that's why I always have an extra line. So <laughs> it's infrastructure. Infrastructure. Thank you. That's yeah. the right. That's so you have infrastructure, and who provides that it has a huge impact on housing, right? Okay. What about industry and jobs? I mean, just if there's a player nearby that demands employees? Um, sure, I'm going to put that down here. Off the board. <laughs> Off the board. You, you guys are thinking outside the box, right? That's good. <laughs> but that's, so what does the employers create? Who's creating the demand? The people are going to, right, the employees, the people are going to, the, the people are going to live there, the residents, right? Uh, or the people are going to live in the housing, okay? So that's here. So the people are actually going to live in the housing. What about? So that's kind of going back to this. What about housing advocate agencies like ARCH, for example, or? Uh, um, ARCH is or? city staff. I just got to make that so, clear. So, but well, I guess what I'm saying is that well, it that exists for the sole purpose of ensuring that people have housing. What about communities? King County Housing Service Authority. agencies. Services. I'm going to say no on that front. Okay. Uh, they're going to. Can you at least put it way down the bottom? Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> because they no, fall. Kidding. I mean, they're part of. You're bringing it up in a different way than it normally comes up. And I'm looking for the way that it more typically affects the housing directly that's in a community. And that is, and you're really close. That's why I'm kind of holding off for a minute. That's why I'm not is, saying no. The labor so force, service organizations, and then there's um, services, right? There's okay, I'm gonna, I'll, I'm gonna say okay, but I'm gonna hold it for a minute before I would write the, it. Down. Would the state play a role with the GMA? 
uh, that's, our land that's use. permit. Well, that's permitting okay. and planning. Permitting, so okay. that's gov- I mean, that's another. That's a player that's in there. But that's the permitting and the planning. What about um, existing schools or hospitals or? That's or infrastructure again. Infrastructure stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Just gets off the top of your head. Simple things. The real estate broker community, but I don't know. The realtors. Yes. Realtors. And the realtor comes in there. And they come in in a couple different roles. What kind of roles in, they play the role of? Marketing for right. So you have <coughs> right. What about banks. Thank you, <laughs> banks, money. <laughs> so one, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. I got to get them right here. Landley, where the Landleys come from? Oh, that's one. Of so here, financing. Okay. We lost the line in here. Oh, okay, there we go. Financing. Okay. Yeah, financing. You've got, I'm going to put realtors here, but they're going to show, there's one that you haven't come up with that all these ones I've been holding off on is a role they play, especially in terms of impacting what housing gets created in a community. You deal with them all the time. Public. The public, the neighbors, the public. Okay, um, so that's here. That's different than residents? Big difference. The uh, resident's trying to get into the home. Okay. The neighbors are often trying to prevent the homes they're trying to get into. Okay, um, so you have the neighbors, or not, or whatever, but the, right, the councils and the commissions, they, they have public hearings and people show up and they're not gonna live there, but they sure impact the conversation. Huge impact. Biggest impact of any player that I, in the field, that I deal with, okay? So taking neighbors, could you say neighboring jurisdictions whose policies may affect the demand in a certain city? I, I'm gonna put that down to sort okay. of, that's the demand side. So We're guessing, need, so I'm, I'm Right, but that's why I'd like that your idea <laughs> to say employers affect who is the one demanding, right? They can right. affect what's the demand that's going on out there. So I'm gonna, just to help to keep us moving on, what about zoning? What about like that's permitting okay. that goes under planning. The landowner, huge. The landowner is a huge player. The land, right? The people who own land have a huge impact. This is the person who builds it. They got to go out and find the piece of land to buy. Big difference. And then the other one that I had here is. The contract, you know, the, you saying developer, but the contractor, okay. Now, what the perp, and who did I leave out? Oh, there's one other that is a professional, and that's where I sort of said, oh, I'm going to hold off on realtors. It's management, okay, property management. Sometimes that's a homeowner. They manage their own house. And other times for multifamily, it's a third party that does management and they have a big impact on what it's like. So the point, the reason why I put this out here is when you're working on an issue, all these people can have incredibly different perspectives on what the answer should be, okay? But this is who you're trying to help. And so what you're trying to do, and then, so that's one theme is as you're thinking about housing, these are all the different ways that impact the end game. And they can help in good ways, they can help in bad ways, they can do all kinds of different things, but understanding that and, uh, is important. So that's one of the things to think about, is make sure as you're doing a plan for a community, when you're hearing people, understand you're hearing different people and sometimes you're hearing filtering from those because the comment that I'll often make, especially related to housing affordability, you know, serving no here, for most of these players, doing affordability is contrary to their primary interests. Okay? Mull that one for a little bit and we'll talk about it more, but from 40 years of doing this, <laughs> it's, and I'm not saying that's bad or good, it's just sort of a reality of when you start thinking about it, other than this player, okay, for almost all the other players, they have other primary interests. And when you think about those, trying to create a f 
stuff for here is a lot harder. But now this is the other main theme for this chart, and that is what's government role? Now, the shaded cells, I've got different kinds of housing, and start thinking about where can government plug in? And what is the thing, when you think about especially housing affordability, that everybody thinks of in a negative way about affordable housing? is public housing, right? And people say, so government can't serve a good function because when they have, they blow it. It's bad stuff. And what's happening is in public housing, the government is playing the lead role on many of the functions. But there's a lot of things government can do in other situations in which they're still relying on all the other players, but they interject themselves in strategic or whatever ways, and those efforts can help steer what happens. So what kind of zoning you allow for diversity, what kind of, and so government doesn't only have one big kind of role, it can have lots of different. So we were showing how for you know, we're using direct assistance, they're a financer, but they don't build it, they don't manage it. We, you know, the cities put money through the trust fund and they're like bankers in that case, but they're not managing it, they're not building it, they're not, that's still being left to other people to do. Um, they can be a landowner, Riverside Landing, the city owned that land. And they said, we'll make that piece of land available in order to allow the kind of housing the community needs to get built. We'll be a landowner who makes something happen a certain way. That's a role you can play. Um, for all housing, they're gonna play that regulatory role. That's what government does. That is the one thing they do. So the reason I like to do this is one, to get you an idea that there's all these perspectives that are all colliding at different ways and they don't have the same opinions a lot of times in your job. You get stuck in the middle of it all. You, you live this and as commissioners. But the other is in thinking of government having a role it's not always bad. In fact, our ownership market is alive and well today because of a government program. Does anyone know what that government program is? That's one, but older than that. It saved the housing market during the depression. FHA, home mortgage insurance. That program was developed during the depression that completely changed the whole financing world uh, for housing. So anyway, so these are a couple contextual things I like to sort of put out there just for you to think about as we're going forward over the next few months. The other, there's a couple others. Um, so go to the next slide. And we'll probably, print that sheet up for you guys so that you'll have it in the future. We're gonna, one of the things we're gonna try to do is create products for you to have a little notebook so that you can, as we go into the future, you'll have some, not hundreds of pages, but some short things to help give context and remember some of these things. So the next is, you've been doing stuff. So this is right out of the housing needs analysis where you listed some of the things that Fossil has done. And so that's the other thing to keep in mind as we're doing this work. So that was where we were talking about the done part of the strategy, you know, the things we've marked as done. You're not starting from square zero. We have a lot of needs, but it doesn't mean the city hasn't been working on stuff. So it's important that you're aware of the things that you have done so that either to build upon them or know that you're already doing that. So you've updated your accessory dwelling unit ordinance regulations. So that was relatively re recent. You have a mobile home park land use designation, right, or manufactured housing overlay. You're one of the few cities that's done that. Um, so it's a very significant tool that you've done. You're a member of ARCH. I mean, this is a somewhat unique organization where cities talk to each other. Um, you have the, the zoning that we were talking about earlier that you did, right, to allow that smaller lot home. So there are a number of things that you have done. And so that's important. And this will be one of the documents that we'll have for you so that you can remember that. And as we do the strategy plans, that will come out more. But that's Another point to be aware of and conscious of. Um, next. And, and then similarly, um, one of the reasons ARCH was created was because a group of citizens said, wait a minute, it's not like our world is all that different from Woodenville or 
you know, there's a lot of similarities. We're in a housing market area that's not defined by a city boundary. So one of the things, and this is one of the purposes of ARCH, is if you're working, you know, here's what other cities have done and you're, that are in your same area. And that might give you some sense of what's out there, okay? Um, so those, that's another way of saying build upon is, well, what other cities that I experienced, have they worked and are we similar enough that that's something we can work from? And next slide. Um, is you have some very basic housing conditions. The first one is your basic zoning, single family, multifamily, how many are in residential only zones, how many are in mixed use. And so what we're showing you is, you know, what you had in 2012, the last time we had data, when you did probably buildable lands, and then what's your land capacity. So what do you have to work with from your basic land use? And what does it look like from a general balance point of view? Um, one of the main things, when I go back to the story about working um, on the appeal, was not only did we show that the city had enough capacity, but the city had a lot of capacity in multifamily housing, and so that meant you were in a position to create more relative affordability because of that, okay? You're not gonna get much affordability with single family. So if your land, all your capacity is only single family, that's potentially an issue. But the flip side issue we're seeing more cities deal with is little of the remaining capacity is single family. You're probably a little higher than some, but you know, so then how do you get other forms of ownership and stuff? And one of the things we've noted is that a significant portion of the multifamily housing built has been ownership um, in the last 20 years. That home ownership rates in some cities have gone up even though the majority of housing that's built is multifamily. We should point out that these numbers are from the King County Buildable Lands uh, report. So it's only reflecting King County. We oh. haven't built in small districts. Oh, I thought we had the whole city. Sorry. Okay, so next slide. So that's one sort of real basic, and we'll do. Oh, where do you where do you uh, draw the line between single and multifamily housing? Is duplex or uh, five unit townhome? Is, is it is it the type of dwelling or the number of? I mean, you have a building with five fee simple homes in it. That, um, yeah, that's a great question. I don't remember if the report details that. Right. And tonight we weren't we didn't want to get into the data. We just okay. want to say here's you know there's two probably pieces of data that are core things to think about for housing. What kind of zoning you have, and we'll have more of that when we do the data work. And then the second is, what's your relative affordability? Uh, so next slide. What is your relative affordability relative to general needs? And so um, we might have had a slide similar. So we know that needs are 12% of households are gonna be very low income, 12% are gonna be moderate, uh, low income, Another 16% are gonna earn between 50 and 80, and then above 80%, you got the 60%. That's what needs are. And as you can see, the, big, the biggest challenge is for that very low income. You know? And so we've shown you what Bothell has, and then they compare that to what King County has. So we'll have a lot more data along those lines, but just the idea of what's the basic affordability relative to what general needs are. Yes. A lot of these say East King County, and this one just says King County. Is this right. East King County? This is, um, no, countywide is King County. Okay. 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 So next slide. So that's, and then this is a chart we'll, you'll always have so that when we talk about this AMI stuff, it translates to real number. And if I'm in a community meeting, I try not to use AMI. I try to say people earning 15 to 30,000 and this and that because this is the reminder, I know we've been through, we've been through this with you, is 50% of median income for a family of four is $45,000 a year, which is an over $20 an hour salary. So, you know, it's, when we use terminology, it might get some people would not necessarily connotate the words to the incomes we're talking about. So just, and we've done that with you, and we'll, so we'll have that chart there for you as we go forward. Yeah. Arthur, I, I'm not seeing these particular slides in our packet. Am I missing That's, that? Or? No, they were not in the packet, okay. but you'll have a data packet, and okay. the data will be a separate. In fact, you'll have the needs analysis, and all of this kind of stuff is in there. But w what we are going to try to get to you is you have the needs analysis, which is really long. Right. At the next meeting, when we talk about data, we'll have a more condensed what we think is key data. 
and we'll have that kind of report so you'll have a more a short version of data so that you won't have just this hundred page thing. So the needs analysis you're talking about is that yes. this East King County? Yes. Okay. Right. Yes. In that data packet, will we have something that addresses your first chart where we'll have sort of a demographic beyond income level of yes. what we're doing? Okay. I mean, whether or not you feel like we how well we've covered it, but we'll have some demographics, seniors, household types, and stuff like that. Sometimes it's hard to get all the matches between in, how many income-wise there are. We have general information, but you'll see it and, okay. and hopefully see whether or not there is some fine tuning to that that you'd like to see, but we'll yeah we'll have information that gets at the demographics. The other one that I thought would be interesting would be maybe for David more than you, Arthur, is um, by zoning type. That might be going into the weeds too much, but um, how many units by that's specific? Yeah. Okay. Right. That that's that's what we were trying to sort of get at with really quickly there, but we'll make a note of that. Because that's probably be your best indicator of what kind of housing you can have, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And the next slide is now we're to, and we've probably been hitting on some of this stuff in the last two hours, but we wanted to make, we, I think, hit the first bullet pretty hard here already. Um, if there's any, I think what I'd like to do at this point is recap a little bit what I think we heard and then tell us if that's close enough for us to put something more together around or if you want to talk about it a little bit more. So what I think I heard was um, a combination of things such as simpler is better, um, sort of like the focus groups. Do you like the idea of continuing your ongoing meetings where people can provide, come in and make comments if they'd like? This informal approach here feels relatively good. At some point, it sounded like you did want to have a, public, a more formal public hearing. That would be maybe towards the end. Um, focus groups is one good way to go. Forum is another you know, way. In other words, we should be going, reaching out to the community as well as just assuming people have to come in. Um, so the focus group seems to be one good way to do that. And I still would like to know if the idea of a forum where we're more open and then we did also hear online some if there's some way to get some simple you know feedback online and also that would include facebook slash social media for people to tie into that to reach out um but it was important to reach out because students yeah maybe but seniors we really need you know there are people who don't connect that way so um those are a range of things that we heard is there more fine tuning well, it, just on, on, with regards to that, the uh, the online uh, part, not yes. to uh, to get too much into that, but basically, the, you know, the city has redesigned their website, and I, I notice you can go on there now and you get notified by any number of things with regards to the community, and it, it's it, so not necessarily Twitter, or Facebook, but but notification. There's a okay. good, really good notification mechanism. I mean, there's okay. of course um, the Imagine and Bothell, but um, it comes out monthly. But that okay. would be, I think, that would be okay. a good opportunity. Okay. We'll do that. And um, we were, we can sort of put together kinds of questions that we're looking at um, for other, that we've used elsewhere or other cities have used for you to look at as some homework. Um, and we're looking for specific names of people and groups that you would like us, there's three cross sections. So bring these back uh, yeah. as homework, okay. Right. Or, or even uh, feel free to email them. Yeah. yeah. Three, there's three profiles for you to think about potentially. Specific individuals, groups that we should be reaching out to, specific groups, and then types, like if we do a focus group like we did, Esquad did seniors, and I think I heard seniors. You know, we said we want to do seniors, and we wanted to do social service agencies, and we wanted to do small business. Is there a category of a community profile that you want us to try to get a group of people together around? Okay, so those are the three different types of input on helping us figure that out. Um, we probably need to try to keep it to like four or five um, focus groups. We can use the other tools too, but just again, it's sort of a management, how much time we have to do everything. Um, and one question I might pose to you Again, wouldn't I don't know what their time frame will be, 
Um, but if I did focus groups and it hit people from North King County and not just Bothell, or do you want just Bothell people, does that, because then I could use these focus groups potentially for all of the jurisdictions on the North End, or is it different? And I just, this just popped in my head. I, I personally would like to hear from more than just Bothell. Okay. And I really would like to, because I, looking at cities that are we've been compared against mm -hmm. here in King County, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, Bothell's kind of unique by itself on a lot of the uh, uh, right. metrics that you have there. So the suggestion for Snohomish County, I would love to see some Snohomish County oh, right. cities that mm -hmm. are kind of comparable to mm -hmm. to Bothell and, and what's happening with them. So am I hearing, I'm not sure, that for doing focus group, if it's a top, getting some people from a, a surrounding communities is okay as well? Well, I th or I not. I, that's. I mean, I'm, there's no right well, answer. I would like here. to know what the income is. What's it, what? What is you know what? What is our range of income? Well, that's for the, people that's the, that, that's that, data. That I think, right? The data that for housing, that that I sit there and I think the people that live in Bev, Bellevue and Newcastle, so, Nisiqua are not the people right, who live here. So Bravo. your two questions are kind of related. But but we also, I mean, I, think, no, we, I think we need to look at successes and challenges that people have gone through in different different cities don't I mean otherwise we're kind of we're so not so now you're okay so uh, okay this is a different type of outreach maybe I'm hearing talked about so can I try to answer yeah. your question okay. which I think is if there's a if there's a type of group mm -hmm. that we'd like to hear from that isn't necessarily in Bothell but is the same type of group that we think would give us valuable input in my mind, I think I think that's right. valid. If you know, okay. particularly if we don't have anybody in in Bothell that's or there there. might be two from Bothell and there's two from nearby and right. stuff. Yeah. Okay. I like that uh, information in addition, but I'd really like to focus on Bothell specifically, just because a, a developer in Bellevue may have different hurdles than a developer in Bothell. Right. I want to know specifically within our plan what they right what they stumble over. So. And that so from the. Okay, I don't so, want to make this too complicated. I just yeah. So for the so for the developer perspective, it needs to be honed in on Bothell. That I think for a lot of perspectives, I think small okay. business owners, I think right. Okay, yeah. I mean we're we're shaping think, it for okay. I think you, uh, you might okay. be thinking more along the lines of some kind of service agency or, right. or a group that that's a more of a service related right. okay. that, that so. sees this type of need kind okay. of across the board. But I I would agree with you as well that everybody okay. else pretty much needs to be from Bothell. Okay. Yeah, right. I'm in agreement with that. It needs to focus needs to okay. be on Bothell, but okay. it will be nice to have an outside perspective as well. Okay. Okay. Other comments on? I think we've maybe hit that one pretty hard tonight. So, okay. So the next is the next. This is now just a chance to spend time for you to just talk about what you think. Our issues and how housing related, good or bad or whatever, things you value and care about that you think are done well, that you want, that are important for us to keep in mind, trends that you think are going on in the community the last few years. Um, are there some things that, um, when you think of the future, what would be, you're going to revisit all these questions later, but kind of as a starting point your reactions on those questions. And we can, you don't have to do them separately. We can do them together. I think one of the trends we've seen in housing over the past half century is the turn from more neighborhood, the city, downtown neighborhoods where people are living to more sprawl. We've seen a lot of infrastructure costs increase because of that. We've seen a lot of environmental consequences. We've seen more traffic. And the more we sprawl, it seems like we're getting this induced demand where people are going to they're gonna live further out. And uh, what I hear is, is people need their cars because that's the way that we're developed now. And so we continue to develop that way so people can continue to have their cars. And I think that we need to stop thinking about what works best for now and start thinking about what's going to work best for the future when we have more people 
and there and there's a younger generation and a lot of them I'm hearing that that they don't necessarily want to live with their cars but we need to balance that with the existing land use we have but maybe not work so hard to continue developing in that manner or at least discuss how to transition away from it I, I you said that about as perfectly as I could imagine I totally agree with that and to me when you like that third question what do you value most about housing in your community um, it's hard for me to think about it strictly in the in the or I was having a hard time thinking about it strictly in the context of just housing but what you just said made kind of made sense to me is that one of the things I love about our community is that that and it, it's not everywhere but I think as a planning commission as a city we're trying to do this is create more oppor local opportunities for people where you can get away from a car you can walk one of the things I treasure about where I live and I don't live that close to downtown is that I do feel like I can walk to downtown I can get on the Burt Gilman trail and I can walk into town and I can I can go to McMinimums I can go to um, you know wherever I want to go I can go get a cup of coffee at Alexis or whatever and and that's that really matters to me and I think um, I think it matters to a lot of people I see and, and, and I just look at downtown and the and you know multifamily housing going up down there and that kind of thing and it just seems like it's becoming a more vibrant place and I and I think that might be because people are encouraged to to do things where they dwell you know the, to, to go downstairs to common grounds and have a cup of coffee instead of driving to Starbucks <coughs> In Kenmore or you know over by Home Depot or something so kind of that more localized I want to do I don't want to just sleep here I want to do I want to spend time here you know outside of that right? that's really important to me I'm gonna play devil's advocate because as a young person I love compressed living big city that kind of thing but I also think people need Space and room to breathe. So, what it bringing it to the topic that we've got going on here as far as affordable housing is the flag that went up for me about home ownership. Is that I see a lot of data saying that multifamily and apartments we're really good on the affordable housing, you know, bumping those numbers up looks like countywide that we're very good at putting affordable apartments together but as far as affordable homes um, how can we be more purposeful with that I understand with mobile homes the dimensions of mobile manufactured homes have changed and so that dynamic changes of how how many mobile homes that we used to be able to put in a mobile home park have changed and those are re that number is being reduced because they don't make long skinny little mobile homes anymore um, so and housing construction is not my bag of tricks I went surfing on the internet looking at modular homes how do you bring down the cost of affordable homes so people can own homes I don't know how you answer that question but how can we have that balance of keeping people local and central and services accessible by foot but still allow them to room to breathe and have their families in a more what we would consider a home like context and I didn't get that impression I got that impression the impression that King County needs to work on that bring that level up with the apartment affordable housing okay. component um, so I think some people take or I've heard this from other people um, there's community building and community sort of I wouldn't say breaking but development going on <clears throat> not within just Bothell but everywhere there's great examples in Bothell of you know housing that maybe has a porch or has street oriented uh, lawns and grass so that people are out and kind of see in their neighbor there's examples where it's sort of a fort and every you have your three-car garage everything else is in the back you don't see your neighbor for all winter um, so I think that's one of the elements and sometimes green spaces or sidewalks or a safe street break that up to where you can kind of get out and meet those around you um, otherwise other times people just kind of hunker in their house and hide out and you think you're seeing more of that or just 
that's an issue in general or I think that's just an issue in general okay. with okay. development. Yeah, when I, when I moved to Bothell like, about 15 years ago, I I moved here because <coughs> of the downtown. I thought it was I mean, there wasn't there wasn't necessarily a lot going on downtown, but it, it was it was a nice little downtown. I really felt like, you know, being so close to Seattle and being so close to Redmond where I was working at the time. Um, it was like being out in the country, and I, I, I enjoy that uh, histor historically how Bothell has um, kept kind of a more of a rural feel. I know we're changing, and it's an exciting time because we're getting a lot of new restaurants and activities to do. But I, I'm hoping that there's a way to kind of uh, keep that, that feel, and, and that, that won't go away because that's just entrenched in the culture here, I guess, and it could change over time and, and will like everything does. But I, I like the I like the fact that Bothell is seem to be a little bit committed to get things that are oriented with regards to families and natural settings and I, I so that's that's part of it. and I guess also when I moved here it was a affordable place it was a, there's a lot of affordable single family homes so so I, I'd love to and that's what I enjoy and I, I hope to I hope that the the commission and the city can get behind you know making sure we preserve some of that. Uh, Affordable single-family homes, as as we you know, as we develop, and um, as I mean, because it's booming, you know, in the Puget Sound, it's the number one growth area in the country. So um, it's it's a fine balance to find. At the same time, I I'm excited about what's going on downtown with regards to the like the 104. I was <coughs> unfortunate circumstances the mercantile, but it'll be rebuilt and the Six Oaks. So it's pretty. You're getting you're starting to get a a real dynamic downtown, and that's exciting. And, and we'll, you know, once we get the 185th corridor with the buses, it's just gonna, and it's just gonna get better, I think. So, but it just maintaining that Main Street feel, rural feel, but also integrating in a lot of new activity, I think, is pretty exciting to me. I think that the trends that I've seen in the maybe the last five years, uh, five to ten years, um, have been, I think, have been in parallel with the downtown development, and which is kind of separate from what I'm talking about, but. The more things that, the more, the more groups or the more developers that come in and invest in Bothell um, with the anchors, so I'm thinking about McMenamins and, um, you know, some of the stuff on the boulevard right now. Um, what I'm seeing is, and I, I live up on Maywood Hill and I drive down the hill and kind of through town and my office is kind of downtown, so I kind of drive through that every day and I think the trend that I'm seeing that I, that is, that I re I'm pleased about is that slowly north of downtown and now starting to work its way up the hill, some of these older homes are starting to get rehabbed. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool to see it, particularly on 101st, mm -hmm. which is kind of behind the, um, oh, is it? well, if you go straight up from City Hall, go up and, and up the hill there and there's some condos there that were built you know, 10 years ago or something like that but that hill starting to you know houses are starting to get refreshed and redeveloped and and so that, that I think that the the um, the vibrancy I guess of the downtown mm -hmm. in my mind is mm -hmm. kind of starting to ripple uh, out through the downtown area and I really I really think that's important um, I, I really it, it means people are interested in what's going on and, and property values are going up, which is maybe a little bit contrary to what we're talking about, which is affordable housing. Um, but people are sinking roots deeper into the city, I think, and stake, putting the stake in the ground and saying, hey, we're going to stay here for a while instead of selling this dump and you know heading out or whatever. So. So that, that is something I've seen as a trend, um, and I think that's been spurred mainly by the downtown mm -hmm. redevelopment. Um, but I'm hoping that that kind of continues out. And, um, and I think the same thing happens sometimes in the, in the neighborhoods as well, if you get new developments that are tasteful, you know, good architecture. People next door tend to say, hey, that's one in particular that I'm thinking of right now is if you go, you know where the Canyon Park QFC is? And what's that dog pet store? Mud Bay. Mud Bay. If you come down towards town from from that road, there's a there's a new cul-de-sac going in 
off of uh, 15th, and they're starting to build the first home on it, which is right off of 15th. And the home, even though it's in a cul-de-sac, the, the front stoop of the home faces 15th. So the garage faces the new cul-de-sac, but the, but the house itself faces the community instead mm -hmm. of facing into the neighborhood. I, th I thought that was kind of a cool gesture because a lot of the older homes on that street also mm -hmm. face 15th. And so instead mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. totally oriented it into its own neighborhood, it's, it's facing out towards the... So mm -hmm. anyway, kind of an interesting development there I think is kind of neat. I thought it, found it interesting that so far nobody has mentioned as a trend uh, prices shooting up. Uh, and I don't know if it hasn't hit Bothell the way it has my neighborhood, but uh, that that is the the big uh, issue in King County or Puget Sound in general. I think maybe it's just taken as a given now. Yeah. So yeah. one of the things that I seem to have heard from many people here is the change in downtown and the revitalization and how that's trended one way or another. But what I haven't really heard about is the, uh, the growth in Snohomish County. And I think over the last five years, the Snohomish County portion of Bothell has, has built more starts than any other area in the region. And, uh, and what we've seen from that is increased traffic. I mean, Little shout out for David Havlowitz. He's at the council meeting every week talking about 405, and uh, and there's a lot of blame being thrown around for that. But one of the things we've seen is a tremendous amount of of new houses that are dependent on on the automobile to get around, and that's spilling over onto local streets. We're seeing diversion through Kenmore. Mayor Baker talks about it all the time. We're seeing it on 405, and. Uh, it's, it's just something that I've noticed as a trend in the last five years that I wanted to bring up with this group because I think it's important to the community. I, I agree, and we hadn't talked much about Snohomish County, but we, we as a commission did last year focus on, you know, the, um, the new uh, neighborhood center concept up there, and w which would, I think, trend toward, hopefully that does ultimately trend toward um, I think a balance of that, you know, there has been a lot of, you know, I think you're talking about kind of north of 228th or in the 35th area where there's just been, it's just exploded, it's gone crazy, and, and hopefully that there's there's some other types of development that can go on now that will help to balance that and, you know, closer in and that, if that truly does happen, the, the neighborhood center. I, I one other quick comment, I think it, it's interesting because it seems like a couple of things seem to be in a way kind of diametrically opposed. Um, you know, Jeannie, you talked about the more traditional house on, you know, that, that was you know, uh, an actual, maybe on a little bit b bigger piece of land or something, and then you talk about affordable housing too, and those two things, you've got to figure out a way to make both work. Because um, it seems like, you know, if you're, the way to make that work is you take a, a piece of land that is a little bit bigger and you figure out a way to, to fit more housing on it, right? Uh, whether that's multifamily or a subdivision or whatever the case may be, and that then then there's the opportunity afforded to potentially decrease the cost of those homes a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes no matter how small you slice up a piece of ground, the house is going to be worth. Seems like it's going to be worth exactly the same. I think in Bothell we have the opportunity to to get creative with that, and 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 you know, in, in context of affordable housing is figure out what is the right balance of that so that we, you know, we, I think it is important that we have, um, we still have some bigger lots with, with the more traditional homes on them, but we've got to find the balance between that and what we're doing in downtown, and maybe there's a, a middle ground somewhere where, you know, we can, um, we have to do something to create the, the I, I always go back to the word incentive, but uh, maybe I'll use flexibility to create affordable housing, you know, that, that actually encourages people to do that. I'd just like to do a time check. We've been, we've been into this uh, for two and three quarters hours now. Yeah, um, and you have something to provide at the end, correct? Uh, yeah. Really, really briefly? <laughs> okay, great. So, and, and I think we've actually moved on to the next question. Uh, yeah, I, I was taking all three of them at once. Okay. <laughs> so I was, yeah. It, so are we ready to move on to the next? Yeah, yeah, we're, right, that's. I think we. Uh, yeah, so, right, so now it's.
you know, this is meant just to give you a chance to sort of put thoughts out on the table. We've done that. Um, I think this is a more specific kind of question, which is, are there other things that are, you know, we're going to do data. Is there particular kinds of data that we've heard some of you suggest some things tonight? Are there other thoughts you have on the kind of data that you think would be helpful? And then, in, and then the other is, are there other plans besides the comprehensive plan that help to show vision for the city? Like in, in Kenmore, the council has a vision statement that we should be collecting and thinking about as we're coming up. You know, they said it's not just about housing, it's how, it, and you said this a lot, how it fits into the community. So are there other kinds of plans in your community or things out there that you think we should also bring to the table when we're talking to, as we move forward? Well, I think you mentioned the vision statement. That, that might be a really good thing to have front and center in front of us as we're going through this, just to keep the overall kind of the big picture of what <clears throat> what the conference and plan is trying to achieve. Okay. I personally think that for me the most valuable thing other than, you know, we've talked about some of the data and that sort of thing you can provide, uh, I'll go back to it, is getting that housing strategy plan consistent with the, mm -hmm. the conference and plan. That would okay. be step number one for me to really help me understand, okay. really understand it better. Um, if there are other sections of the comp plan that are germane to the to the topic of the housing <coughs> strategy plan, it'd be good to have those. That, okay. that was my source of confusion is seeing, you know, the H H O and the L U and that kind of thing. If if the, if, the, if if there are other sections that are, uh, mm -hmm. I guess I'm asking for you to give us a lot more yep. material to review. <laughs> but not necessarily don't don't necessarily want that, but I think we need right. okay. we need the full picture. All right. I'm, I may regret passing for this, but um, it seems like housing definitely doesn't stand alone, and there's elements outside of the city of Bothell that should be taken into account. So our school district's keeping up with it. I don't know that we can analyze it here. And roadway infrastructure, I mean, Jason touched on it quite a few times. Um, just the added traffic, kind of something to take in consideration when we're, I'm trying to analyze bullet point four in you know, 20 years, what do you mm -hmm. see? described as a successful outcome, we kind of have to be a little bit more holistic with our approach rather than just the end product. I, I appreciate that. And I would even say beyond 20 years, I mean, a lot of the infrastructure planning and investment that's happening in our region right now is going well beyond 20 years. So I don't Yeah, I, I think with regards, and that's a good point, going out more than 20 years. And so a big component that we're talking about is the affordability of housing for workforce for workforce housing. And so um, I think a successful outcome as a planning commission for me looking out into the future would be, would be a place that um, is available for all incomes and different uh, types of housing possibly for people of different incomes. Uh, that may mean, you know, smaller single-family homes. Um, you know, having more of a diversity of, of uh, uh, housing availability. Some of that has already exists. That's why I was so, I'm so interested in preserving some of the already existing um, smaller homes, uh, not necessarily uh, making the development community, because I, 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 I know it's too expensive to actually reproduce those uh, with the land values that are out there now. So that would be success, successful to me, and that's also also integrating and um, integrating the um, the housing into the and in, into the natural environment that we have here in Bothell I think it's a pretty unique place it is a little challenging too with the hills I was trying to figure out how to make it make because you Jason I know Christian Hampton brings it up about uh, many times about a walkable community transit and I'm all for that and I think that's definitely something we need to shoot for and the the the, the geographic uh, I, I, the geography of our town makes it a little bit challenging at times because it is quite hilly. So that's, and I think that's where maybe, you know, Canyon Park comes in and so you have these kind of pods of developments that does, does make it a lot more walkable in different parts of the town. So that was a long kind of disjointed thing, but I, I, I hope it's just available uh, housing for 
people of all income levels. I think Commissioner Fleet brings up a really good point with you know access to transit, and I'd be curious how many homes within the city of Bothell were within a quarter mile of a frequent transit stop. You know whether that's every 15 minutes or every 12 minutes, how you want to define frequent. I would imagine that many of them have hourly service, but I'd, I'd be I'd be keen to hear how many units versus you know how many minutes? every every maybe four times an hour. Quarter mile. I think that's about the distance that, in general, people are willing to walk at this point to transit. Could it, could it be broadened to um, not just every 15 minutes, but what? How many have it within a within a, you know an hour increment within a quarter mile or whatever? Just make it a, a table that is you know a little broader base because I think that information. I think now that I think about it, would be. Be worthwhile. I would add one other thing in terms of the successful outcomes. I think it's David mentioned the word diversity, and I, I think um, diversity not just of income level, but of just different types of people. You know, getting a blend of, of you know who we are. We you know and, and encouraging uh, doing what we can to encourage that level of diversity of, of not just income but race and and, and that sort of thing and and. and uh, and really look to that in the future. I guess as I think about, you know, I mean, we're growing pretty fast right now, and, and 20 years from now, even if we choked it back to maybe half the pace that we're building now, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people in Bothell. And so, and you guys have touched on this too, but my, in terms of success, in my mind, uh, moving people, um, is going to be success, and part of that I think is community transit or or buses or you know technology is changing really fast as well. Um, personally, yeah, I can work from home a couple days a week if I want to, and so I think there's I think there's uh, some different avenues of, of of hope in different ways in terms of trying to relieve some of the congestion. But how do we go about you know with the UW Bothell? Just down the street, um, with large companies in Bothell, how do we go about um, networking and connecting our downtown to the university, to the interstate, uh, in a way that? Um, and I know that takes regional coordination, but um, to me, that would be a successful outcome if we, if our downtown is fully developed, just like that picture on the front page of the of the downtown plan, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's built out, and people are moving, and there's not congestion and people come on you know get out of my way that kind of stuff so that that would be success and you know I'm sure there's different different levels of success to that but when I see in 20 years a successful outcome to me would be lots of people being able to get where they want to go being able to to hang out downtown hang out where they want to hang out still able to you know have their kids in sports or clubs or, or whatever that is music band um, and, and, and to be able to get around and get to those places where community is. So it's pretty vague, but. Yeah, I think we'll, we're about ready to wrap it up then so we can, because we got to wrap it up by nine, so. Yep. So this is all. Any other questions for Arthur before we let him go? Hopefully this has started to, I know it's the first meeting and just gives you a chance to start to get the feel for we're removing and this has helped us get some sense of things that are of interest to you so we'll see how we can work with pulling that together we'll work on the outreach plan and the data for the next meeting um, get that more honed in and then we'll start talking real data hard data and stuff I really appreciate your input I, I when you when I came in here and I saw the flip charts like Got to admit, I rolled my eyes a little bit, but that actually was a very helpful exercise. <laughs> I was kind of wondering where you were going with that, but then I realized, yeah, he's leading us down a good direction here, so I really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I flipped up this last slide, which gives you a little, uh, some homework uh, 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 tasks. Uh, between now and next time. Would we be able to get a, a, and then the slides are a little bit different than our, our packet for obvious reasons, but would we be able to get 
you know, or, well, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know if we actually need them, but they're a little bit different. So the homework, it'll just come to us in the, in the next packet. Right. Did that get to you yet? Right. No, we can, yeah. we can, yeah. we can send you the, this as a yeah. handout. That'd be great. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. So that, yeah, so make sure you keep in mind, this is, we're going to resend you the needs analysis or whatever, and we want sort of the, we'll know if you've read it because you'll have some clarifying questions. And you'll have a couple points of data that you'll see, you know, sort of the same question we just had now. What data, when you read through this, really that, that we provided? And then we may still have data gap, gaps, and that'll be part of the second meeting is to sort of go again. You know, I'm not sure we'll have the transit data by then or we'll see what we can find on it, but we might be able to get some rough information the way you've described it and see if we can't pull something like that. Or, and so we don't stop data necessarily at the next meeting, but let's get as much of that done as we can. So upfront input, and re re feedback from what we get you would be great. When you say needs analysis, sir, are you talking about yes. the yeah, King County right. housing analysis right. that's already attached? Okay. Yes. So that's a, yep. that's so I don't think we need to resend that. Okay. So you, you've got that. Um, right. Yeah. Will you be resending the, a revised housing uh, strategy plan that no, kind of re not, not immediately, not but immediately. by next, our next meeting, yeah. It'll be Following available meeting. at yeah. the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. No, no, not for the next meeting. That won't be until like the third meeting. I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm talking I about the edited one that Matt, that's, that's consistent I, with the comp plan. I understand. Uh, not meeting. for the I, next third meeting. Okay. Well, we'll discuss that. I, I think that's a reasonable request. Uh, okay. So you can cross-reference the difference. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll, oh, go ahead. Can we, can we I guess we can bring the study session to a close? Uh, yes. Right? Okay, without a motion. Um, so let's see, uh, old business. I don't know if there's any old business. You have anything, Dave? No. Okay. Uh, and your report from staff looks like there's something there. So, like I said, uh, uh, this packet only included uh, this month's calendar. Uh, we um, we're still working on uh, next month's, and and we had the the uh, uh, draft calendar for for this item. The other things coming up in in uh, early 2017, uh, basically filling the time between. Uh, uh, the start of the year, or between now and when we bring the planning docket uh, to council and the uh, the actual hearing on the planning docket, uh, are the miscellaneous downtown code amendments there's, that are scheduled to come back to you next week. I have to confess, I, I have not been able to prepare any more material. But uh, so one question is: Do you do you feel like there was enough material uh, presented last time as an introductory? for just a set another session, um, not just receiving that material, but actually starting to uh, uh, talk about uh, 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 solutions, uh, short of actually uh, us bringing you back code language. Uh, and, and that could be, a, we could have a, a fairly brief session next week on, uh, on that uh, without, without uh, a lot of additional preparation. Um, so, Dave, I think at least with regards to some of the downtown um, building related, frontage related issues, building mm -hmm. orientation, that kind of thing, it seemed like we were all on the same page on that. I don't know if we need to revisit that. Uh, I don't think we do. Um, the other was the, the canopy uh, mm -hmm. right away. Is it, those, are those the two issues that you're talking about? Those are the, the, the two primary ones. Okay. So, I well, think there was some yeah. question about the canopies, and but... The other one the was other the one. building separation. So the yeah. frontage, the building separation, yeah. and, the, and the building canopy. I mean, it seems to me like you could come to us with your proposed code amendments and we'd be able to give yeah. you. Okay. I, I'm speaking for myself, but I'm, uh, that's what, what my sense was from last, last meeting. Uh, I think it would be good to look at some examples of other jurisdictions that have done balconies into the right of way and see how that affects light penetration to the street and overall street feel at the street level and and find out i mean i have to be honest i, I looked this up and, and i'm not seeing a lot of jurisdictions that do this balcony over the right-of-way sidewalk i mean there's there's minimal examples that i've seen mm -hmm. but without having light penetration through an awning so i would like to see what that looks like and 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 find out why other jurisdictions aren't doing that that's just mine so so I can do that, but I can't do that for next week. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we've had back-to-back -back, uh, council and planning commission meetings. I've got a packet uh, 
that was due a week ago <laughs> for next week's council meeting. Uh, so what I would suggest, if, if you don't feel like it's worthwhile to, to meet and, and have a further discussion on the material that was provided last time on this issue is that we just postpone that until January and, and pick it up then when, with uh, some fresh material. And also uh, remind everybody that at, at least two of us will not include one, including me, will not be here next Wednesday. And um, we did talk about that. Um, I think at the last meeting that this wouldn't, that the fourteenth would not be the last opportunity to discuss the miscellaneous down co town code uh, amendments. So I'm I'm saying that if there isn't anything new, I'd be I'd be completely fine to wait till January to address that. The confession. Consensus of the commission on that, mm -hmm. yeah. and you certainly so. have some some homework uh, from tonight's that that uh, that. So it's not like you're being idle. Uh, okay. So you're so you're recommending that we do not have a, a, a meeting next week. Is that correct? Because of that's what I'm hearing from. Okay. From the commission. Is that is that pretty much the consensus here? Or is that what I'm looking around? I wasn't there for the first meeting. You think we can wrap it up in one meeting in January? Did it seem or is it? I think it depends what, if we're going to pursue, uh, it really depends on your availability to, yeah. to pursue particularly that new item, but also the other items we addressed at the, at that, and I don't remember what all those were right now, but I think there were a few things. But, yeah. I, I, My feeling would, would yeah. have been to c continue to have a meeting, um, because that would mean we only have one meeting in December, but, but if there isn't a whole, if, if you haven't had time, because I know you have had just a few other things on your plate, if uh, if you haven't had enough time to address some of the other questions that we had, then then I guess it does make sense not to have the meeting. Um, but I, I guess we we really, I, I guess one thing I want to I guess say is that in, in 2017 we'll, we will probably be, I mean I, I would assume we'll be having more meetings than you know one a month. We'll be, be prepared to at least have a couple meetings a month. Because we have a lot to get through, so as, as you can see, I mean, even this just housing uh, housing uh, strategy plan alone is going to take up quite a bit of time. So yeah. So the other things on the on that <clears throat> on the calendar between now and the and the um, uh, planning docket is uh, clustering. So uh, again, that was another one that Bruce uh, brought to you for a study session over a month ago. Now uh, he's been uh, totally swamped with the uh, Fitzgerald uh, sub area plans. And uh, which is why it hasn't come back to you uh, since then. So, but you can anticipate that coming back in January. So I think there'll probably be a number of uh, months uh, in that first quarter where you, where you'll need be meeting three times between housing strategy plan, wrapping up miscellaneous downtown code amendments, and and the clustering. Um, the other thing I just wanted to, the, the other reason why we haven't. Uh, tie down the schedule better is that we do have a new city manager coming on board. As, as you know, Jennifer Phillips was hired. Uh, she uh, uh, was at the council meeting last night and uh, uh, will be at an all staff uh, meeting tomorrow morning. So um, we'll be seeing how, you know, uh, how the work program uh, develops under under her uh, leadership. So. Um, uh, so there are there have been a lot, number of balls up in the air, and uh, uh, I think there will continue to be for a little while as we make that transition. But uh, uh, that'll that'll have an impact on on the work on the calendar. Okay. So that's all I had. I had. So I guess that'll mean we we are, will not for the public who are listening in uh, will not we will not be having a meeting uh, this next week, and we will be talking about the miscellaneous downtown code amendments in January, sometime probably. Yes. Uh, Possibly not the very first uh, Wednesday, which would be the fourth, I believe, uh, but the, the second uh, Wednesday. Okay, great. I don't think we have, if there's anything urgent, reports from members. Does anybody have anything urgent? Okay. Then do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs>